Good evening. Thank you all for joining us for the April 9, 2019 meeting of the Hendersonville Board of Mayor and Aldermen. We're going to begin our meeting as we typically do, and that's with a prayer and a pledge. So please stand and join me. Thank you all so much. Please bow your heads with me. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us together in this wonderful city and this, uh, uh, in, in a service to you. And uh, thank you for all the wonderful gifts you provided us. Thank you for the wonderful opportunities we have, and for the people who make this a wonderful community, especially people, people who protect us here, and help us not forget the people who protect us far away. Help us use the wisdom that you have given us to make decisions that reflect you here, and make decisions that reflect you as we go away from here. And help us to go away from here safely, and help us to go away from here and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm going to entertain a motion to accept the agenda. Alderman Waters. <clears throat> Alderman Waters, go ahead. A motion to accept the agenda? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I got choked on something. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Miss, I want to amend the agenda, Mr. Okay, Chairman. A motion to accept. I think I heard a second. There we go. And Alderman I Waters, ask, go ahead. I ask to be recognized after item E. Okay. Edward. I, okay. I so move. So you want to be item F? If what you want to call me. Okay. <laughs> okay. We have a motion to add item F. Uh, give us an idea what the topic is, please. Uh, it's going to be about my cohort here. And it's okay. It's going to be about a, a town hall meeting for Ward 6. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Alderman Edwards, a motion is second to add item F. Um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, please say no. Alderman Bolt. Yeah, I'd like to add two two items separately. One would be just a uh, brief discussion about the uh, the mayor uh, hiring an outside law firm to represent the city for on city business. Um, and the second one would be in regards to two employees that we have and uh, a discussion about their retirement benefits being somewhat under attack. And I'd like to to be able to address that and the need for them to have legal representation. We got a motion. Okay. And a second. Uh, I'm going to speak on that. I am not prepared with those at all, and I certainly hope that if I had something that I'd want you to participate in the discussion, that I would give you enough time to be prepared for that. I have no preparation for either one of those items at this point, and I hope that you would have given everybody else some preparation to do that. Obviously, you've had some time to prepare, but you're giving us none. Go ahead. Well, I, I don't have time to pre I don't have time to prepare and respond to comments made about me on Facebook. So. I mean, it's just one of those those situations where this has come to my attention. Let's just go ahead and address it. It's something that's been going on for a while, so I I, I don't understand the help me understand yeah. the the concern about addressing it now. I don't have material in front of me right here, and I don't have some folks that could probably help us understand this situation. In fact, I don't even know specifically what this is about, and I have no preparation for this. But I suspect that you're going to be asking me an awful lot of questions. Uh, that I'm going to have to give partial answers to at best, which is not going to help us make a decision. Well, the second one, I, I have no idea why you would think you'd be involved in that one, so I'm not sure. On the first one, yeah, you probably probably do know about that, and you would know more about it than the rest of us would know about it. So I'm just asking the question if you would just address it, mm -hmm. whatever it is, and we'll just be done with it. And maybe there's something incredibly logical means nothing. Okay. So I don't know. Do you think it would have been better had you given me an hour or a day or a week to prepare and get records from this, possibly emails, possibly notes from other conversations? He's talking about, Mayor. Okay, yeah. well, hold on one second. Do you think it would have been helpful had you given me more time or other people more time to prepare for that? I, there's, I don't think th there's nothing to prepare for uh, that I understand. I, all I'm asking is this happened, help us understand what it's about, and then we're done with it. The other one... It's hard for me to help you understand it, what it's about when I've had no opportunity to prepare for it. I'm likely to give you answers that are not full answers because I don't have any information in front of me. 
And if that's what you want, I mean, that's what you're going to get. But to make a decision, have a full discussion, I would allow everybody up here to prepare for that. Well, that I don't, I don't know, even know how to respond to that. You signed a contract with outside legal, with an outside legal firm mm -hmm. in December. Well, hold on here. We're just talking so, about the items on the agenda, adding it to right, the agenda. Right. I get that. But it would have been, if, had you let me know that ahead of time, I could have gotten information about signing that contract if I did. I could, have, I could have gotten information about that, possibly emails between me and the city attorney or me and the person who, pr who provided that contract. I don't have those right now because I didn't know this was going to come up tonight. There Even no, though, there hold no on, John. Con, John, hold on. There are no John, hold on. Between him and the John, hold on. John, hold on. There's a motion on the floor. I think you need to vote on it. I understand. I'm the chairman. We're still having a conversation back and forth. And, John, I think you might have had a conflict of interest speaking on that, to be honest with you. I don't think so. So, Andy, it, it's just hard for me to give answers and have a reasonable discussion up here if I had no opportunity to prepare for this. May I address the motion? Well, hold on. I, I address I, Andy. I'll let him go ahead. Res and Alderman Bolt. Respectfully, as opposed to me going behind anybody's back or anything else, mm -hmm. I'm just asking a very simple question. And and in the past, mm -hmm. you've dodged those questions. We've Then we end up having to ask you by email, mm -hmm. and they're not always very responsive. Mm -hmm. Look, I'm not asking for much. I'm just asking for consideration on this. Mm -hmm. And since you're the one that's involved, and, and I'm not, okay. I, I don't know how we would prepare for it on if something I get, that you're If I give me in. some more time. I, I, why would you need more time? Because look what I have in front of me right here. I have some certificates for the hockey team here. I have a couple agendas. I don't have any emails. I don't have any items that I may have had communications about this or any reason. I don't have any documents in front of me right now that would certainly help us all understand this discussion. I think this is something that probably should go to the general committee. Maybe give me, or if not, then let's come back here. But give me some time to prepare, and we can have a much harder discussion with much better information. Uh, I I'm guess, fine with it in two weeks, but give me time to prepare. I guess what I what I'd ask for is just, I mean, if, if that's true, mm -hmm. and and the board feels that way, then then we'll table it. I I, mm -hmm. I honestly, I promise you, I don't understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. The other one. I didn't know it involves okay. you in any way, so I'm not sure what okay. what, what your what your concern about that mm -hmm. one is. I, I really don't. So on the first one, it's just mm -hmm. a it's just a question and help us understand okay. what transpired. Okay. I don't know what what preparation would be needed. So I, I guess what I would do, mm -hmm. if it's okay with you, or I, what I like to do is just ask the board mm -hmm. if they'd like to talk about it. If they don't want to talk about it, I'm perfectly fine mm -hmm. with that. One more thing about that is that you mentioned it's, it's one question. I want to give you all the most information I can. And there's a lot of information on, on this one item and that you all may not know about. And I want to be able to get that to you. So when we have a discussion, we can have a full discussion. And like you said, sometimes my answers haven't been full answers. I want to give you <laughs> full answers. I'm aware we, we're not aware of it. So um, I'll... What you I'll give say. me two weeks, I'll give you great information. I'll give no, you no, 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 no. Let's just, just vote on it. And, and if, if the board feels mm. differently than me, I'm mm. perfectly fine with mm. that. <laughs> we'll table it and we'll address it at another time. If they want to hear about it, then let's just go ahead and hear about it and be done with it. Okay. So. Uh, Alderman Woodcock, on this item? If we're going to vote, I will not speak. Okay. Uh, Alderman Edwards, on this item? It's going to be a limited informal discussion. I mean, there's, we're not going to be voting on anything, are we? I mean, if it's just a. There's a possibility of voting on something on the second item. Just it's a very brief, small item, but yeah, it's possible. If it's just a limited informal discussion, I mean, I don't, I don't see the problem with talking about that tonight. I mean, that's yeah. Well, here, here's my question: Why didn't you let us know an hour ago <laughs> or a day ago? Why didn't you let us know that? I'll tell you what, Jamie, Mayor, I'm in. Uh, I'm a part-time politician, so I work part-time doing this. I have spent countless hours. I can't tell you how many hours just in preparation on trying to trying to handle the city administrator. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to. I'm in transition of changing firms. So I have let that go in order to be able to try and handle some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'm not organized enough to be able to do that. I don't know. All I know is I have a limited amount of time. I don't always have time to do everything. I'm a little frustrated, quite honestly, with being attacked on a on a Facebook page that I have no access to, so I'm not sure who's saying what about anything. I think it's just a really simple question. It's either mm -hmm. yes, obviously it happens. Just tell us mm -hmm. what happened, and then we'll just be done with it. And if the board doesn't want to deal with it, 
I'm okay with that, and we'll mm -hmm. shelve it, all mm -hmm. right? It's fine. I, I want the board to understand that the discussion on my end is going to be extremely limited if it's going to happen tonight. If it will happen right. another time when I've got the opportunity to prepare, it will ha contain much more information. May I address the motion? Hold on one second. Andy, do you want to, anything else? No. Alderman Sprouse. We've probably spent more time discussing whether or not we're going to have the discussion than the discussion itself is probably going to take. No. I don't know how the mayor could say no unless what I think is true, which is he knows what the questions are, he knows what the answers are, and he doesn't want to have those in a public forum. I think that we should have the ability as elected representatives of our neighbors to have a discussion of an important issue if it deals with legal matters, if it deals with our employees and their benefits, that we should be able to have that discussion. I would rather be able to have the opportunity to ask someone a question and they say, I do not know, but let me research this and answer that, than to say, don't even ask me the question. Now what I would really prefer is when someone's asked that question and they do know the answer, they answer it. But I think what we probably need to do is have the discussion, see what the issues are on the table. If there's things that need to be researched, the people on any side of the issue who need to research it can research it. We have that discussion. However, if something is brought to the attention of this board and action is required and action can be taken, it's our responsibility to take that action. I'm really excited and interested now to find out what the discussion is, and I encourage the members of the board to vote so we could have that discussion. Alderman Sprouse, from the odd situation, I agree with you um, that I'm, I'm going to be asked a question and I'm going to have to say that I'd be happy to get you more information. The reason I know what this is about, because I was just handed this. I mean, about five minutes ago. So I know exactly what this is about, but only from five minutes ago. Five minutes before that, I asked some folks if they had anything to add to the agenda, and I was, t and by Alderman Bolt told me yes. He wouldn't tell me what it was. So I even lost out an additional time to get prepared. Right. It's very hard to give you all an explanation and to answer when I know right now I will not be able to give full answers. I would feel more comfortable with that response if the questions that were asked as a result of meeting two weeks ago when you did not answer questions, if those questions that were sent to you following up to that meeting were, were answered fully. Oh, I so called a question. Um, we, ha we have a motion to call the question that requires a two-thirds vote to cut off uh, debate, which is Alderman Petrelli, Alderman Woodcock, and Alderman Edwards at this point. I'll second it. Uh, second to call the question. We, have, we need a two-thirds vote to uh, vote on adding these two items on the agenda to cut off, to cut off conversation on these two items. All those, um, we'll have to call the roll. This is to end conversation about these two items. Can't vote. Can't vote. Brown? Yes. Cunningham? Yes. Edwards? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Petrelli? Yes. Skidmore? Yes. Sprouse? Yes. Waters? Woodcock? Yes. Clary? No. <coughs> so now we're going to vote on adding the two items on the, who's that, that passed? That passed nine to two. Now we're going to vote on adding the two items on the agenda. All those in favor, please yes. signify by saying aye. I'm sorry? I've been in the queue. I just want to simply. I got you. We we cut off. We just cut off. A, we just cut no, off the discussion. I was in the queue. It doesn't matter. We just cut. It doesn't no, we're matter. Still on that. We're just, still there. We're, we're not just there yet. Cut off. We're good. We just cut that off. We're good. So, um, all those in favor of adding the two items to the agenda, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. No. Um, our no's are from myself, uh, Alderman Woodcock, and Alderman Waters. I have a motion. I like. I like to. Add. Add to the agenda, please. So that passes to add that to the to add those two items uh, on the agenda. Okay. Um, Alderman Woodcock. Um, I put them as C and excuse me. I put those as C and D under other agenda items. I thought that's what he asked for. Them. Okay. Alderman Woodcock. I'm sorry. Alderman Petrelli. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would like to add to the agenda resolution 2019-21, a resolution regarding the calling of special called Board of Mayor and Alderman meetings. Thank you. We have a motion. I'll second that. And a second. Uh, can you tell us what that is about? Alderman Petrelli? Uh, yes, I have my Go ahead. Um, whereas respect to employees and citizens of Hendersonville is engaged when calling for special meetings of the Board of Mayor and Alderman, 
um, that the city recorder shall poll the board members with at least 48 hours prior notice to a special board meeting being scheduled to see if a, if a quorum would be present. Present. It is what I discussed at our last BOMA meeting. Thank you. Alderman Strauss. Oh, do we have a, oh, we have a second. Alderman Strauss, on this item to add no, it to the agenda. No, I just need to add to the agenda, please. Um, is there something timely about this? Because this just went com to committee tonight, am I correct? It did. So the first time it was ever heard by anybody on here was just a couple hours ago, is that correct? Um, it went through committee tonight, tonight but mm -hmm. I discussed it at length at the last BOMA meeting for approximately 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. I will, um, you, I'll address that if I may, please. Uh, Alderman Sprouse, go ahead. This did come before general committee. Um, I'm also the person who years ago was sponsor, who sponsored the rule for two weeks. I will in good faith and it's typically hard for me to vote to add these things to the agenda unless it is time sensitive and in all respect to the, the sponsor, if the chair of this body and the chair of any committee would commit to not calling any special called meeting until this legislation is considered, then I would be happy with holding off to it. Otherwise, I think it should be considered tonight. Alderman Brown. Brown. I want to add something else. I'm not talking about that. Oh, not that? Yeah. Uh, I, I have the only special, only special call meetings that I know of that are coming up as a workshop after this meeting and a study in the workshop uh, a week from tonight. Uh, that's it. I don't, and the only other one we may have a special, we may have a need for a special meeting uh, for the uh, budget. I don't <coughs> anticipate that, but we also have on here discussion of rescheduling the June 11th meeting uh, to June 13th. Those are the only things that I have in mind for the next three months. Well, if, if we have something on the agenda tonight that is part of this, of having to deal with special called meetings, then I think it's appropriate that we deal with this legislation tonight then. And then I would support adding it to the agenda. Anybody else wishing to speak on this? All those in favor of adding this item to the agenda, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. 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 I believe that was uh, Alderman Woodcock, Alderman Waters, and myself. Okay. Alderman Brown. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we had a joint meeting tonight of public safety and finance to consider a resolution authorizing transfer of funds from the fire department salary line and the uh, PD salary line in order to purchase new radio systems for our patrol cars and our, uh, our fire department. Uh, we, as a group of five, passed that unanimously and would like to have it added this evening so we can go ahead and uh, make a vote on it. Is that item E? Yeah. Sir? Is that item E? Uh, yes, sir, it would be. Okay. It'd be 2019-24. Mm -hmm. It's on there. All those in favor of approving item 2019-24, uh, which is on the uh, presented agenda, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. <laughs> That passes unanimously. Thank Alderman you. Sprouse. I'd like to add item E formally to the agenda, please. That's, that's what we just did. Oh, I'm sorry. So we're back to the main motion adding under ordinance and resolutions item F from Mr. Waters, um, item G from Alderman Petrelli, and under other agenda items uh, C and D from uh, Alderman Bolt. All those in favor of accepting the agenda as amended, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. That passes. I'm sorry, I'm going to vote no on that. So that passes. Uh, next we have presentations. Gentlemen, it's good to see you all. This is not the first time we've had this group up here, um, certainly not. Um, we appreciate you all being here. I want to tell you a little bit about them. This is the Hendersonville High School ice hockey team, and I want to say congratulations to them because they finished the season 
as the Gene Ash regular season champions with a record of 16-1-1. One one. They fell just short of the Predators Cup state championship title, uh, but with a, had a postseason record of 4-2. Uh, the team members representing the high schools from the city of Hendersonville were Station Camp, Beach, Mira Hyde, and Hendersonville High School. And as they did last year and the year before, and I think the year before that, they had an exceptional campaign this year and very much appreciate what y'all do. I got to speak to um, uh, the Hendersonville High School Select Chorus yesterday, and not only uh, did I tell them congratulations, but thank you. Um, you represent Hendersonville very, very well. We appreciate that very much. So if you could come forward, I'm going to ask um, Troy and Tim to help me out a little bit here. And so if you all can come, come help me. And then one of them is going to decide which one's going to speak uh, between now and just no a few idea. minutes from now. <laughs> I, I, I defer to the elder statesman. Okay. Uh, Slava Yarger. Gavin Damewood. Congratulations. Matthew Siciliano. I'm going to hand that one to you. Okay. Caleb Philpot. Emma Knoll. Clayton Stickle. Joey Glenn. Brody Ruffing. Alexander Yarger. Colson Leonard. <laughs> Sam Sparrow. Can I get that one to you? There we go. Shane Pearson. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thomas Hasselblad. I just said it fast, so it worked. Comrade Murphy. Brandon Shaw. Jason Rath Rather, excuse me. Jackson Rather, excuse me. I, only, I, I know the guy, too. Jackson. <laughs> Sean Gonzalez, sorry, Jackson. Jackson Rather, there, I said it right that time. Um, <laughs> uh, Eric Hall. Tyler Kimbrough. Austin Robinson. Logan Haney. Good job. There we go. Garrett Parker. Uh, Coach, Coach Tim Rather. Coach Troy Damewood. Okay. Uh, Coach Tyler Rather. Coach Kenneth Graver. There we go. So who's speaking? <laughs> Thanks, Mayor. Thanks, Boma. We appreciate you guys recognizing all the hard work that all of these young men and lady put in this season. We had a great we had a great season. Obviously, we're proud of everybody. Proud of everybody's support. Um, I know there's a lot going on with the inline rinks. We thank you for that because almost every boy here started at one time or another skating out on the inline rinks, and we're very thankful for that. And I think you know what I would like to ask for next, but I'm going to leave that off tonight. So. <laughs> Thank you for recognizing these young people for all their great hard work. It's a great group. Sure. You just want me to stand? You want me to come down there? Okay. You may still not be able to see me standing up here. You want me? Okay. Here, I'll come down there. 
take the contract so she can get a picture of the horse. Talk to the person two seats down from you. You talk to that person two seats down from you. It's in his committee. It's been in his committee for a year. <laughs> Next, we I need to entertain a motion to approve the March twenty second, two thousand nineteen special meeting minutes. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Those opposed, please say no. That passes unanimously. Next, we have approval of the March twenty sixth, two thousand nineteen meeting minutes. I have a motion. In a second, all those in favor of approving the March 26, 2019 meeting minutes, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, please say no. That also passes unanimously. Next, we have citizen comments. Uh, Otis Jones, Nathan Forstrad. Citizens, mayor, councilmen, employees of the city, it's nice to be able to be here. Haven't done this before. It seems dangerous in here, <laughs> <laughs> especially what I'm getting ready to do. Um, I spent my career preparing studies, many of them uh, similar to what you looked at here. However, in this particular case, um, I kindly looked at the study and looked at the study in a way that I guess you could say it's normally done. Now, if you're going to do a study like, I'm talking about the city administrator now. Don't want to, I should have said that to begin with. City administrator, uh, generally if you're going to look at a change, the first thing you do is you state the current situation. And then you identify the problems and then you evaluate some options. And then you identify a preferred plan. Now in this particular study, all you did is say, um, we're going to look at this one option and decide whether or not to do that. Now if you look at the current status, the city manager organization was re rejected by the Hendersonville citizens. Now you can have a long discussion about how you get to a city manager or a city administrator, but in both cases you have a person uh, that reports to the alderman. Now you can say they got there by this way or some other way. Now in this particular case, uh, this organization that we have now, the mayor was adopted at that time. Now that's the uh, current situation. Now then, you identify the problems. However, in this one, in this study, you did not ask what are the advantages and the disadvantages of continuing what you have. You looked at several different options uh, and looked around at other cities. 
Now, if you look at other cities that are in excess of 50,000 population, seven of those have either a um, have a mayor, and five of them have a city manager or city administrator. The same basic thing, uh, just call it a different way, and you can you can uh, spend a lot of time describing it. But it's the same thing. Now, what you looked at was to take the mayor, move him over to the side, have a, just a few people uh, reporting to him, and then you get your city administrator, and the city administrator reports to you. Now, there was a lot of discussion uh, about Franklin. Now, Franklin has a city administrator. In fact, it has a city administrator and it has three assistant city administrators. Did they explain that to you? That they had three assistants? Okay, so the span of control issue uh, hasn't been addressed. And if you only get a city administrator, uh, this professional probably will look at span of control and want some additional people. Now, how much would one cost? Well. Uh, it's a real, I did a real hard study. I did a Google search on city administrators and looking for them, and they'll run about $150,000. Now, you mentioned one, and uh, if you went to Cincinnati, you're probably going to get more than that. But a city administrator itself, without anything else, is going to cost you, uh, by the time you get your benefits, um, the things that are necessary, then you're going to spend approximately $250,000 more than you're spending now. And there's nothing that pointed out that you would save money. You talked about it. Uh, the people in the study talked about it, but they gave no proof. They just gave reasons. Now. The preferred plan, if you look at two options, the citizens have already chosen a mayor instead of a city administrator. And if you continue with a mayor, you don't add a quarter million dollars to the citizens of Hendersonville. Thank you. Mr. Jones, you, thank you. You can uh, see this in more detail on a web page. The web page is called Hendersonville, Tennessee, Government by the Citizens. Thank you. Mr. Jones, thank you. Uh, Bonnie Furtick, Hickory Chase Drive. Good evening, Mayor Clary and Aldermen and Alderwomen. I'm Bonnie Furtick, President of the League of Women Voters of Hendersonville, and I'm here tonight to speak to all of you and all of you on behalf of our local league. We are a nonpartisan organization in that we are not affiliated with any political party and we do not um, endorse any political can any candidates. We are, however, dedicated to encouraging the active participation of citizens in government and we work to inform them about issues. The question of whether to hire a city administrator has become an issue that we decided needed our attention. In many cases, we institute a formal study group with the goal of reaching a consensus, an agreement, often taking a position for which we'll, we'll do, we, will do advocate, we will advocate for it. In the case of whether or not to hire a city administrator, our process has not gone in that direction. We have instead formed a fact-finding committee. We studied the issue and interviewed the mayor and other individuals. We have studied the city charter and have been present at presentations before General Operations Committee and or watched it on the local access channel. While we have not taken a position pro or con on hiring a city administrator, we do, however, have several concerns that we would like for each of you to consider. Our first question as a fact-finding committee was, what are the problems that made it necessary to form an ad hoc committee? 
Additional questions we'd like to see answered are, are the problems personnel related or does the situation really require a change in governmental structure? Are there often changes that could be made? Are there other changes that could be made or other strategies that could be explored that would improve whatever problem exists without adding another layer and as expense, which was previously alluded to, in our city government? For example, maybe perhaps expanding the um, human resources department or some other um, issues could that be considered. Since this proposed change to a city administrator would substantially alter the existing power structure in the city, why was there not more input from the public? The city of Hendersonville has had four referenda and in 1986 the citizens voted two to one in favor of a mayor aldermanic form of government. So do we really want to change that now? Under our general law, the mayor aldermanic charter, a city administrator is allowed, of course. If you decide to vote in favor of a move to a city administrator while the mayor would remain the face of the city, the administrator would run the city and be answerable to or report directly to the board of mayor and aldermen. Again, that would represent a substantial change in power structure. We would urge that this matter be addressed with the electorate, your constituents, to make sure the, the citizens understand and want this change, to understand and want this dynamic change. Will future mayors become mere figureheads? And lastly, can the city really afford to add another position when it is struggling financially? While there has been some discussion on the cost savings that could result from this change, has the fiscal impact thoroughly been explored to ensure that the city can afford this addition change or however you want to phrase it? We would respectfully suggest that a careful, careful cost benefit analysis be taken before making such a momentous decision that will affect the citizens of Hendersonville. As a League of Women Voters, we appreciate this opportunity to address you this evening and encourage you to reach out to us if we can be helpful in any way. And we thank you for your commitment and your service to Hendersonville and its residents. Thank you. Bonnie, thank you. Uh, Barbara Brennan, Jefferson Drive. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your service. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. My name is Barbara Brennan. I live at 116 Jefferson Drive, and I've been a resident since 1986. I don't recall if I voted at that time because we had just moved here. I have read thoroughly several times the report that was done, and uh, I am concerned about the short term that the group was given to research this and look at the pros and cons of the format and what's changed since the 1986 vote uh, and two to one that was in favor of having the mayor as the chief executive. We are larger and the, the job has gotten bigger and I think that that really is a concern. Other than meetings where the public cannot speak, where's been the voter input? And I mentioned that previously and understood the time constraints that you mentioned, Mr. Sprouse. I appreciate that. But when we really look at changing the form of government, I think it requires more voter input than some committees where we don't have input. And there's been a lot going on in our city since I've lived here, and there's a lot more work to be done, and it's very complex work. Uh, but I hear a lot of conflict and I hear a lot of controversy. What I don't hear is us surrounding our current structure and our mayor and offering assistance to get it done. We need to have strong department heads that have finance uh, expertise, that have fire and, and expertise in their EMS, that sort of thing, as opposed to a structure where you expect one person with a master's in public management to have expertise in all of that and solve it. One concern I have had that was reflected on page 22, 36, and 37 of the 
comments were that aldermen and all had gone to department heads and talked directly with them. I have uh, just recently retired after 43 years in management and over 30 years of that in senior management in for-profit and not-for-profit organizations. And I can tell you that when directors or aldermen go to directly to department heads, that in my opinion is an end run around the current uh, structure and the, uh, the current chain of command, which does nothing but cause more conflict and issues. So the voters decided in 86 that they wanted someone to elect a mayor overall, and each of you as aldermen maybe have been elected by a few hundred votes from your <coughs> ward. And so I think the, the mayor's position represents a larger representation. <coughs> I'm also concerned when aldermen sort of get their fingers in the operations. I have worked in organizations where that occurred and it was deadly to the organization to have people tinkering in the operations. And so I'm very concerned about that. I'm also concerned that this committee uh, would decide themselves and vote to change the total structure of our organization even though it is allowed in the charter. Cost is an issue which has been addressed and does need more information. One thing I have to say that I'm, I'm pleased from all of you and also from our mayor that I feel like I know more about what's going on in the, in the city than I ever have before so there is better communication. In looking at the documents I really read carefully the comments of those interviewed and I uh, appreciate the anonymity that was attempted but I also looked at the fact that that your comments when you were interviewed and the comments of our city employees were commingled. So while there may be some of you that feel strongly about the city administrator position, when you commingle that with the comments of the employees, I can't tell if there's a conflict of interest there. So that made it difficult for me to truly evaluate what those comments were. And I also appreciate that the mayor was given the opportunity to address those same four questions. But because of the magnitude of this change, I do feel like there should be more dialogue with the current leadership than just those simple four questions. I'm also concerned if you have a city administrator and each of you are their boss, that you have lots of bosses and there really isn't one boss. And I think that's very difficult to ask directors to manage that. On page 22, there's a comment about the city administrator having a vision for the city. And I have a problem with a paid employee setting the vision for the city as opposed to our mayor and our alderman. Barb, 30 so seconds. Thank you. I think that's really a concern. So I think uh, uh, I'm not sure that the city uh, degree, the degree that you mentioned, the Masters of Public Management, by the way, my husband has one and he would not be qualified to manage all those departments. Uh, that there should be other expertise. So in conclusion, my concern is I think the timing of this and the way it's been handled is suspicious to me. That, that I'm not sure of the motives and the purity of the motives and, and I wish that we would please surround each other, uh, try to get great department managers, really support them in what they need to do so we can do a better job for our government and Thank not you, try to solve it by simply changing the format by committee vote. Thank you, Barb. Uh, Charlie Floyd, Southburn Drive. <coughs> okay. Uh, Jason DiStefano, Center Point Road. He's here. Good evening. My name is Jason DiStefano, and um, I'm the owner of Green Village Recycling at 173 Center Point Road in Hendersonville. And I'm not going to talk about the city administrator position. <laughs> I am, however, going to talk about two topics briefly. The first is to comment on the upcoming discussion about the waste contract for the city of Hendersonville. I'd like to point out that you have several vendor bids um, for waste service and it will be important to look closely at each of those companies uh, and the quality of work provided to the existing municipalities and historically. To quote a member of the waste committee, the lowest bid doesn't always mean the best company for the service. On the second item, I wanted to comment on a re recent local social media post regarding the troubled state of recycling in the U.S. and its relationship to uh, China. While there are some parts of the story that I would agree with, much of the information and the current challenges with China and recycling is somewhat speculative. Over the past 10 years, my company has recycled millions of pounds of material from Hendersonville successfully. I don't know if you're aware of this, but Americans recycle nearly 87, 87 million tons of waste each year, 87 million tons. Over the past few decades, China has been accepting more than 30% of U.S. plastics for recycling. 
However, China's economic growth over the past decade has, has uh, created an internal supply for recycling plastics and materials in their own country. So their economic boom has increased their own purchases of their own products, thereby closing the loop within their own country. China is trying to use their own wastes so they can develop their own domestic recycling capacity. Current tensions between China and the U.S. certainly aren't helping. The current administration's recent efforts to increase U.S. production of goods by increasing tariffs on Chinese goods has led to full-scale retaliation by the Chinese government. For example, the Chinese government placed a 25% tax on aluminum scrap. Formerly, the U.S. made more than $1.1 billion on aluminum trading. The new tariffs placed $300 million burden on that industry. But this is a temporary setback, and it will rebound over the coming months and years. Much like the housing industry, banks, and the economy in 2008 has rebounded. The materials collected in the recycling industry has cyclical pricing. Some years and some months it's better than others. It changes over time. Contamination levels in America are at 25% uh, right now in most recycling. Public education can help resolve much of the problems with contamination. U.S. companies are starting to process recyclable materials more in an effort to exploit the newly vacated market because of China's embargoes. Many cities were charging nothing for their recycling to residents. They did not understand that there is a cost to haul off recycling, just like there is a cost to haul off garbage. Either way, there is a cost to get rid of that material. The city of Hendersonville can significantly benefit with a citywide recycling program. The city will reduce their costs with less landfill tipping fees. The city of Hendersonville can work closely with the Greater Nashville Regional Council to help develop a long-term solution for waste and recycling within this, in, within this region. Recycling plays a crucial role in minimizing waste and preserving natural, natural resources. Don't fall prey to misinformation about recycling. It is a proven fact that recycling, combined with proper public education, low material contamination, works very well for thousands of cities across the country and around the globe. Thank you. Jason, thank you. Uh, Mary Burns, Roberta Drive. I never planned on following him. He's eloquent. <laughs> I'm here to just talk trash. Now, most of us are old enough to remember the infamous garbage barge. Well, the garbage barge was from New York, and it went from place to place to place after Staten Island was full and their landfills. They said, we can't take no more of your garbage. So this barge goes from place to place. They even tried California, and my friends met them in San Diego. Now, as the, the barge went from place to place to place, it was because nobody wants your trash. Nobody. So I want you to realize that recycling is vital. If you look at New York's recycling right now, I bet you find they got the lesson down pat. They recycle very well. So I invite you to check the numbers for New York's recycling. And that infamous garbage barge is why. I see our city growing. I see uh, houses that are proposed. And as each family moves in, we bring our solid waste stream. Now, if we do not recycle, I do not want someone to come forward and say, you know that beautiful barge that takes the coal past my place, the what you call clean coal, which is an oxymoron, as it takes this clean coal to our facility to burn it to create electricity. I don't want it going back full of garbage because nobody wants our garbage. And we certainly have available space right here in Hendersonville. We have the most beautiful parks, and I am proud to say our parks are wonderful. I don't want one of them selected to be the next landfill because nobody wants our trash. So you all think about who gets it in their backyard because I have seen not in my backyard played forever. You all have heard the word NIMBY. Well, not in my backyard. And I mean it. And if we learn to recycle and do it intensely, we can avoid putting that trash in our park or on the barge. 
And uh, believe me, I look at that barge sentimentally and photograph it often. It's, it's really cool to watch. I don't want to see it going that way full of trash. So let's all put our learning caps on and learn that we are all responsible for this. We live here. This is our town. So y'all dig out the books and uh, support recycling. And I think that Mr. DeStefano uh, was quite eloquent and... Uh, have I got your attention? Okay, now that I know I have your attention and that you are listening, I want you all to make sure that we get recycling in Hendersonville. Thank you all. Mary, thank you so much. Next we have Finance Committee, Chairman Cunningham. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we had a joint uh, Finance Committee meeting tonight with our uh, public safety uh, friends in reference to resolution 2019-24 and I'm going to uh, let uh, Alderman Brown the chairman of the public safety get into the weeds of this resolution I'm just gonna uh, go over the surface of it with the finance part of it uh, it was for a uh, resolution authorizing the transfer of hundred and fifty five thousand eight hundred seven hundred eighty two dollars and sixty one cents from the fire department salaries and four hundred and fifty seven thousand nine thirty five and twenty cents from the police department salaries to assets one thousand dollars to seven thousand dollars to purchase a complete radio system and like I said I'm gonna have um, uh, Alderman Brown get into the weeds of this but pretty much it's uh, we're, we're it's a total cost to us of six hundred and thirteen thousand seven hundred and seventeen dollars and which will result in a savings for us because the original bid came in at 803728 so it'll be a sa overall savings of a, for us of $190,011. And then I just wanted to uh, add an update on the audit. Uh, 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 according to Craft CPA, Ken Youngstead, he's a partner there. I have very good news uh, that our audit, it looks like it's going to be completed by the end of April. Uh, for the uh, our best estimates the capital assets schedule they received it last week from our uh, finance director and uh, they have to perform some audit work and a review process and so we should have it by the end of April and uh, that's the end of my report mayor thank you uh, chairman Cunningham something came up earlier and um, uh, in one of the comments um, I would appreciate it if your committee could look at the city administrator cost oh yes okay. Uh, Alderman Sp uh, Chairman Sprouse, General Committee. Um, um, Alderman Petrelli for um, Chairman Cunningham. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, so I'm going to ask this question because it, my understanding is it falls under the duty of finance, but um, I still have not received an answer um, regarding our risk assessment process for the city and what our insurance coverage is because as we found out, during the floods, we had a major asset that was not even on our insurance carrier. What is the update for that, Mayor? Um, I don't have an update from you. I probably got 12 emails from me in the past week. Um, I think I've answered about eight or nine of those. That one I held off on because what I felt like we answered that in the Finance Committee. I'll do my best to follow up and figure out with, Alderman, with Chairman uh, Cunningham what we haven't answered so far. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you say I've sent you 12 emails this week? Uh, probably about the past week or so, yeah. I've sent you, I believe, five. I can state that in the last 20 days, I have emailed you this three times. So as to not do an end run for the finance director, I have gone directly to the mayor, and these questions do not get, get answered. So I am open to any suggestion from any citizen in our community so as to not end run how to get an answer to the question if all of our major assets for the city are covered. Again, I know we, we had a pretty long discussion about that in the Finance Committee a couple weeks ago, did we not, Chairman uh, Cunningham? I know we had a lot of questions about it then with our finance director there at the time. Um, uh, yeah, I, but we didn't get into the details. I think, okay. I think Peg wants the details. Why don't I get with you tomorrow and figure out what details we still haven't gotten on? Okay. Um, I appreciate that. Okay. I, I have an email with five questions in it. 
I would just simply like an answer. I don't understand why it's so difficult. Thank you. I got you. Part of the problem is that I've got emails from some other board members. I've got emails from probably <coughs> probably 20 folks with questions about garbage that I haven't gotten to that have been in my inbox for a longer time. I'm trying to get to those as as uh, as they come in, so I can make sure that I get everybody answers, not just on this one item. So. I appreciate that, Mayor. Sure. That was not on our insurance carrier that if it had been damaged in the flood could be a loss of millions of dollars to our citizens. I'm not going to go back and ask our citizens through their taxes to pay for this loss of a park because of a simple oversight either in the finance department or in the, C in the executive function of the city. So I'm not really sure, again, how I can get this question answered. I'm willing to find out in any way how to get the answer. And I've been very polite. I've been very professional. I have not gone to the finance department. As a matter of fact, I Googled how many emails I've sent our director since my tenure as an alderman, which is three years this month. And in three years' time, I've sent him three emails. I would just appreciate the courtesy of a reply to my emails. Same email three times in 20 days, no end run. Alderman Petrelli, I'm going to let you have the last word. Uh, Alderman Sprouse, so we can move on. Uh, General Committee. Thank you, Mayor. We had a very uh, full uh, agenda. We actually uh, had to have a special call meeting so we could start early and start that. The first item that was on our uh, on the agenda was Ordinance 2019-14, uh, Ordinance Creating the Position of City Administrator and Setting Forth the Duties of this Position. Uh, that passed, uh, was recommended to the Board with uh, two votes in favor, one abstention. I've been asked just to address one of the emails that I've received was a friend last week, a constituent, asking about um, a message that she received from the Mayor um, regarding this meeting, and I think it's appropriate that we have these discussions publicly just so people know what the process is. And including in that email was the comment that uh, Chairman Scott Sprouse said that there would, there would be no surprises if the General Committee moves forward. It is surprising that the ordinance is already written and placed to be on the agenda at the last second. Every ordinance and resolution the Committee considered tonight, just like it does at every one of its meetings, is already written out before it's placed on the agenda. That's how the members <coughs> of the committee know what we're going to be discussing, what the proposals are. That's how residents who want to have questions can know what we're talking about. It's not just a line item saying we're going to be voting on garbage. It's going to be we're going to be voting on garbage, and here's the paperwork to go with it. You have from Friday afternoon to Tuesday night to read about it and do your research. So there was nothing surprising. would also like to point out a rule that I sponsored many years ago requires two <coughs> weeks unless this board votes to put something on the agenda between it being here to com heard at committee and being heard at the board level. If you were at the old city hall maybe 16 years ago, 15 years ago, there is the possibility that something would be heard at committee and then would immediately go to the board. Sometimes 15 minutes later, the board meeting would start and the board would vote. And I didn't think that was right. So the process is that you hear it at committee, and citizens may not have a lot of opportunity for discussion at the committee level, but it starts a two-week window for public comment. Because we give the reports at this meeting saying, here's what we've talked about, and as soon as it's going to be two weeks before we discuss it again, let us know what you think. That's how we opened it up. It was also in the email from that uh, came from the mayor that why did the three sponsors, Mr. Bolt, Mr. Campbell, Mr. Hayes, wait until the last second to put this on the agenda? They didn't wait till the last second. Staff starts working on agendas on Wednesday. Always starts working. Agendas for a Tuesday night meeting go out on Friday. I see, uh, I see a former member in the earlier of our board, somebody who served our board uh, 30 years ago. It was probably the same process when she was on the board. And so there are no surprises. Everything was done exactly the way it is. It's unfortunate that questions about the process and, and people gaming the process are what we're having to discuss as opposed to the issues that are on the table. I appreciate y'all um, wanting me to discuss this, but I think it was important for us to defend the process, defend the process for not just this committee, but for all committees, and then also for the people who sponsor that legislation because they followed the traditional and standard timelines and nothing was out of practice. Um, we continued on. Ordinance rezoning the land there between is Ordinance 2019-15. That's the property there behind Lowe's. 
a request to take it from commercial to residential. That was a negative recommendation from the committee. Two members of the board of the committee uh, recommended against that or were asking the board to, to vote against that. There was one abstention. Ordinance 2019-16, uh, ordinance dealing with Durham Farms rezoning, that was recommended three to nothing. Uh, an ordinance appropriating uh, TDOT funds for the Saundersville interchange project, that was recommended three to nothing. Resolution calling special board of mayor and alderman meeting um, rules, we'll hear that tonight, that was recommended three to nothing. And a resolution establishing the process for recruiting and hiring department heads was also uh, recommended three to nothing and that relates very much to a conversation we had in this room two weeks ago um, when there was questions asked a simple yes no question of did the mayor engage a private company to initiate an online uh, recruitment for our new um, finance director I'm sorry our new public works director and that was one of those questions that he couldn't answer at the time but he would get back to us and that's why some of the emails have gone out I went ahead and did a little research didn't do much of an in run. I just asked the um, city recorder for the copy of the document. I'm going to pass this down, and you'll have copies here. And you'll see a two page agreement that says what the agreement is with the mayor and this company. And then you'll see behind that the job description and the posting that the company did. I pulled this directly from, MTA, uh, from TML or, or MTAS site, one of the state sites that where they have job listings. This is what was posted, you'll see, for the finance director. And then if you see behind it, you will see what our, um, what our own internal staff did for the public works <coughs> director posting. Um, same level job. Um, you can go back and forth depending on which week it is, which one's the more important job, finance or <coughs> public works. Alderman Sprouse, is this on the general committee agenda tonight? Yeah, when we were discussing this, I, here's what I want to get to, Mayor. You will see that the, just if anyone who wants to look at this, the job that is done by salaried employees in City Hall as part of the hiring process is considerably higher quality than this one that is filled with errors and has missing information that we're paying $55 an hour for someone to do. You don't have to be highly technical to realize that a job posting is not very good if it doesn't even list who you contact if you want to apply for the job. So what I'm going to do, Mayor, is repeat a question that I emailed to you two weeks ago Tuesday because you didn't answer the question in the meeting and you said we should email. I emailed you two very simple questions. Did you discuss the plan to engage this company with our HR department prior to signing the contract? And the second question is, what can they do for $55 an hour that our salaried staff can't do as well, if not better. I, I notice that you don't have my answers in here, even though but I emailed them to you. You didn't answer my question. I did when I emailed you. You didn't include the email with the answers. I don't have the email. Why didn't you include it with this? You had time to make this copy. Why didn't you include the email? when you? I can send you the email again that I sent you, but you never sent me a response. I think I sent a response to the whole board. Did, did anyone on the board get a response to that? I remember there being an email from Mrs. Petrelli saying, here's the response the mayor sent me to my question, but he sent it only to me. Did anyone else get a response and they didn't, that I wasn't copied on? And my response was, I haven't received one yet, but if the mayor sends one to me directly, I will copy the entire board on it. I, I responded by email, I'm pretty sure the next day, an explanation of everything we did on this. I don't know what ha why that email isn't included here. Why, why didn't you include that here? Because that email does not exist, Mayor. Did any member of the if, board if, receive an email should, answering should, those questions? What, do you want to take a break and I'll go get it? Should we take a recess and I'll get it? I'll do it right here on my phone during the next committee report. Well, if you said you didn't have the email, you're not going to find it on your phone either. I have but the I'll, email I sent you. Okay. You well, have the email you sent me specifically answering those two questions. Um, I don't have it with me right now, and I'm chairing a meeting. Okay. Uh, you want to take a research? We'll take a research. We'll take a research. We'll take a recess at the end of committee reports. It'll be about time to take a break anyway, um, and we'll happy to do that. Should we? Uh, well, you can't decide. We take a recess. We have to take a vote on that. So I'll bring that up when we get okay. uh, when we get to end the committee reports. Um, Chairman uh, Brown, public safety. Thank you, Mayor. Um, <clears throat> we approved our minutes from uh, our March 12th meeting. 
tonight. We also looked at resolution 2019-16, which is a resolution authorizing the city of Hendersonville to enter in a interlocal cooperation agreement. It's hard to say, folks, interlocal cooperation agreement uh, for an emergency communications between our, our city and county and other agencies. Uh, we looked at 2019-11, which is an ordinance amending the Hendersonville Municipal Code or Housing Code, which is basically cleaning that up. Can you not hear? Uh, and, and getting rid of that in our code because it's no longer uh, warranted. Uh, we had a resolution recommending certain street names, development names to no longer be used that will go to our ECC. Uh, in, in, is that right, Mr. Harbsmar? That's right. Okay, our emergency management. Uh, such as Meadow Lake, Meadow Lane, we don't want a Meadow something else. I've lived on both of them and my, my mailman's confused now, so uh, I don't want my ambulance confused if I have to use that. So, uh, that is a good thing. We've been talking about that for a while. Alderman Trelly brought that forward and uh, uh, we passed that unanimously. Uh, we will be looking at resolution 2019-24. It was a joint meeting between public safety in finance tonight and Alderman uh, Cunningham has already explained a bit about it, the money. Uh, what, basically what that entails is the county is changing their systems and uh, we are on a system right now that we don't, we cannot converse with each other very well. So when that comes <coughs> forward here in a few minutes, I'm going to ask, uh, looks like Commander Hobsmeyer and uh, Chief Bush, there you are down front, uh, to come forward so we can discuss the logistics of that. And Chief Jones, if you're in here, uh, okay, we're good. Yeah, you are, <laughs> you're back there. That's my report. I appreciate that. Um, as I asked, um, uh, as I suggested to Chairman uh, Cunningham, I'd appreciate it if the Public Safety Committee could look into the uh, City Administrator and the impact it would have on that. Uh, Public Works, Chairman Skidmore. Thank you very Thank you very much, Mayor. Such a lively meeting already. I'm glad that everybody came tonight, not under these circumstances. But uh, Public Works, we're already starting our work already because it is spring and summer. This is our hardest parts of the um, year for us. And it's the most exciting for the taxpayers of Hendersonville because that means you get to see drainage, prob uh, drainage problems getting corrected. You get to see street paving. And I know uh, probably people that are watching this on TV or not are saying, yay, because I know that's what I'm saying in my heart. So I'm glad to hear that, that it is, the, it is now starting. I um, do want to say one thing, and I don't, I don't know if it's been announced yet or not. It may have, and I, you know, on, on social media, as most of you guys, if you don't know now, or and I know Mayor Claire always hates for me to say this because he's so sick of me saying it, or the one people watching the audience, I'm terrible at Facebook and social media. You know, I just, I'm one of those type people that I guess my, I just get as far as I can on the computer, and that's about as far as I can get, and that's about what I am at Facebook. So um, if it's been announced already, uh, Vice Mayor uh, Cunningham, and uh, uh, if I'm stepping on your toes on here, I apologize. We're starting to uh, do some paving work on Caldwell Lane and also on into Centerpoint Road because um, it's desperately needed out there. We're, we normally, at the, at the, in Hendersonville, I need to remind everybody, and of course the aldermen know this already, we try to start paving on the main areas of town because that's because those streets are used more, and then we invade into your neighborhood, and you see all the equipment come in, and so we, we start those kind of things. And the same will, uh, will uh, suffice with drainage. We start to look at those uh, real, the, the worst areas that need it, and then we kind of expand back out. So if you see this stuff in your neighborhood, you know your city government is at work working for you. Um, we did on our other, uh, in our other meetings, we uh, have discussed street lighting in uh, Hendersonville. We're in the process now of getting uh, working with um, NES and Cumberland Electric and uh, I want to say there was one more but I, I don't think that's I think those are the only two that that we're doing um, oh yeah uh, to to work with the, about our street lighting uh, issue in Hendersonville uh, parts of our older sections of town versus our um, new section is still uh, sometimes inadequately with lighting on the street and uh, 
that affects not only the for our police department but as well as with our people that are driving uh, going home or coming early in the morning when they leave and for for work um, other than that mayor tonight that's all I really have uh, dealing we do uh, schedule one one other thing we are doing we are in the process of just we've just started we're going to go ahead and move on to our budget even though we don't really know when our we do have a meeting scheduled I think the full board does on the 16th of April for our budget workshop but we really didn't know when our budget normally in public works we're already about halfway through it but this year's been a little different and that's okay because I can I can change you know so that's not a problem we just decided to go ahead and and press forward and I don't know if any of the other uh, um, agencies in the within the city have but we're go we're preparing to go ahead with our to start talking about our budget within the city of Hendersonville dealing strictly with uh, public works um, have not spoken to um, the parks board or Re uh, parks and rec yet um, I have a meeting um, with uh, Andy Gilly uh, sometime this week let our schedules look at and then we've, we've got some things we've got to talk about so other than that uh, we're starting we're going to be starting that other than that I think that's all uh, I, my colleague in uh, in uh, public works is not here tonight um, I was going to ask him if there was anything else that was on what we had discussed at our normal public works. We are scheduled to meet on the 26th. Alderman Cunningham. Okay. Alderman, hold on. Thank Mary, Mary. Alderman Cunningham, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. I want to thank uh, Chairman Skidmore and his committee and the, and the mayor and my cohort here uh, for the improvements on uh, Caldwell and Hillview, Iris. And um, it was very much appreciated by the residents. Thank you, Mayor. Alderman Waters. And thank you, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Vice Mayor, for saying this. Thank you, Mr. Words. Chairman. Uh, question for Chairman of Public Works. Yes, sir. Um, what's the status on our drain water, uh, stormwater, I'm sorry, stormwater utility? Uh, is all the money in? All the taxes been paid? I know I paid mine, so. And it was on there, so. Well, I appreciate you doing that because well, I paid my time. I take care of you, okay? <laughs> I appreciate so you, take, you doing so that. So you take, how about you take care of Ward 6 and hey, give, me, give me an answer right quick. Well, I'll tell you what. We're, um, we'll, it's, I don't really know what the finance, I don't want to speak for finance because I, uh, but well, I believe our, my our she does. She distinguished can. colleague from Ward uh, 3. Alderman um, Cunningham. Go ahead. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, Alderman Waters, uh, we were going to have a uh, complete update by our next meeting, our workshop, of all of the monies collected so far and all of any anything that's been spent so far. So <clears throat> we'll have uh, two line items that we will be able to discuss next week. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman, Skidmore, Alderman Waters, anything else? I just want to make sure my chairman in public works sure. is on top of this because I'm on, already man. getting calls. Well, they should, and we should be, and anybody. Wait, 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 wait don't yeah. interrupt me. Yes, sir. Don't, don't talk over me. I apologize. It's, it's okay. I do. I'm already getting calls that I paid my money, and where, where's the results? So I promised them tonight that I would ask you when are we going to get results on this drainage problem, and she just answered my question. So okay. thank you, Mr. Chairman. Alderman Skidmore, as I suggested to some other chairman, um, it would be helpful if the Public Works Committee looked into the impact a city administrator would have. I we will be happy that. to do that. I Let me write that. that down, and we'll. Okay. Capital Projects Committee Chairman Campbell, do we have a? I don't, yeah, have, they, have they met? Um, and then Planning Commission uh, Alderman Woodcott. Thank you, Mayor. We met on April second. It was a six-hour meeting. We were here until after midnight. Um, and when you guys placed me on that board, no one told me it was an unpaid position. So that that should have been mentioned. Uh, of course, I'm joking. I, I love being there. It was a great meeting. Like I said, we were there until midnight, but it was a great uh, professional um, meeting. Uh, we had four controversial issues. Uh, first uh, two, we had two site plans, uh, one for carrier chiropractic. We approved that one. Second one was for a cell tower by Vogue Towers. That one was denied. Uh, we had two preliminary development plan revisions. Uh, the first one was Anderson Park, which we heard about earlier. That one passed by, I think, one or two votes. Uh, Durham Farms uh, w was passed, so I think almost unanimous, maybe one or two against. Uh, we approved the final development plan revisions for Glenbrook, Section 3, Lot 7. 
Again, that one was a, a close vote by one or two, but it did pass uh, for recommendation. Uh, the last item was Montclair, which is a, a development in Ward 5. The applicant withdrew their application, but I need to note that it was going towards a denial recommendation, and we withdrew that recommendation so that they could not appeal to the board if it did fail. So they will pr bring back a plan. We don't know when, mm -hmm. but expect that to come back sometime in the near future. Thank you. Alderman Woodcock, thank you. Next, we have a second reading of Ordinance 2019-12. This is an ordinance amending the Hendersonville Municipal Code, Title 13, Chapter 1. Alderman Brown. So moved. We have a motion. We have, hold on, we've got second on the motion with Alderman Brown or second on the motion for a break? Well, Alderman Brown, um, unless he wants to rescind his motion. Alderman Woodcock, what's your second? Is your second for the motion? Okay, well, hold on. Alderman I will Brown. withdraw my okay. motion. We have a motion for uh, a break. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. No. Uh, no. no. I believe Alderman Skidmore is the only one. Okay. <laughs> 11 to 1. Until I find everything I need. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, go ahead, Daryl. I think you should. Just so there's no uh, dispute. I talked to the mayor, and he agreed to allow Mayor uh, Vice Mayor Cunningham to take over the meeting while he researches a couple issues. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Woodcock. Okay, next on the agenda we have second reading of Ordinance 2019-12, an ordinance amending the Hendersonville Municipal Code, Title 13, Chapter 1, Property Maintenance Code, uh, Alderman Brown. Second. Any discussion? No, uh, Alderman Edwards. Well, I was just going to ask if... Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Okay, I was just going to ask if we can take the, uh, the special meeting off about the workshop for the beer and parks. I think there's some people here that came to talk, discuss it, and I don't want them waiting till midnight, and I don't... I don't want to be here till midnight either to talk about it. Maybe we can move it to another. Oh. 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 Okay. Do you want me to still delay? Okay. All right. Um. Why don't you make a motion about it, Mr. Edwards? Uh, motion, uh, I'll, I'll make a motion to take the workshop off. Uh, it's not really on the agenda, just to move the workshop from after the agenda to another night. Just to withdraw the notice. Just withdraw the notice. Okay. Do I hear a second? Second. Do we need two thirds? Well. Oh, wait a minute, Andy. Hold on. I, I spoke with some people that are that are not okay. immediately in this um, audience okay. and told All them, right. and they were fine. They don't want to be here till. 11 I would imagine not. I was just checking. But will they so, come back? So. Oh, yeah. They want to come back another, maybe another night. So. Do we need two-thirds for this? Oh. Oh. Okay, one other person here. Alderman Petrelli. Uh, Madam Chairman, thank you for recognizing me. Um, I just wanted to, I'm not sure what the proper protocol for this would be, but to stop the meeting and um, wait till the mayor is available to come back. Uh, Make well, a we have a motion on the floor now just to delay the uh, the beer sure situation first, and then I'll we'll, come back to that. We can get, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other comments on that? Okay. All in favor of uh, deferring uh, the uh, discussion and the special call uh, meeting about the beer ordinance? Say aye. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Okay. That passed unanimously. Alderman Petrelli again. Thank you, Madam, Madam Chairman. Uh, I would like to take a, make a motion to take a recess until the mayor is available. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? Oh, wait a minute. Scott. Alderman Sprouse. Just because it's not going to be reflected by anyone watching this when it's broadcast because of the break, we have just come back from a 40-minute recess that the mayor asked for or suggested so he could go find an email 
that he says he sent a couple of weeks ago or 10 days ago. I'm okay with taking the recess, but if something's not found in 40 minutes, I don't know if another five or 10 or another 30 is gonna change anything. Alderman Edwards. Um, I say we go forward until we get to the um, issue of the attorney and the employee retirement issue, because I, I know the mayor would want to be here for that. But I say we go forward with these other ordinances and resolutions. That's fine. Okay. I'll withdraw. Thank you. Okay. Comment. We didn't have ordinance Alderman Sprouse. And, and just so, again, anyone who's, who wasn't in the room is watching this, um, Mr. Woodcock announced that it was that he was advised that you should continue with this meeting and so I don't know what's changed in the last few minutes so I'm ready to go okay thank you uh, we have to still vote on 2019-12 uh, let's proceed with that and then we'll proceed with the next motion uh, all in favor of 2019-12 say aye aye, aye. aye. All opposed? Okay, that passed unanimously. Uh, all in favor of continuing the meeting until we get to the agenda item for, what was it? The contract with an attorney. The contract with the attorney. Do I hear a motion on that? So moved. Second. Okay, okay any discussion? Okay, Alderman Skidmore. Yes, thank you. Do, does anyone at the board at this time know whether the, the mayor had any objection to any of these, all, uh, of any of these, I was looking back the minutes and it didn't see like, seem like that he did. Um, we could just go forward with the ones, and I think it's all of them actually, that he had a problem with because if there was any one uh, that, that he, of the ordinances or resolutions that he did have a problem with, I would object to that because he's earned the, he's earned the right to speak on those uh, resolutions or ordinances that he that he opposed. But in my review of these, I don't see any that he objected to. Um, if anyone uh, disagrees with me, by all means, say something because I'll certainly either m make a motion to defer the ones that he did object to. I don't, but I don't see any. But someone may no uh or okay alderman uh edwards the the special meeting he may want to be here for the special meetings item g if i wrote that down correctly that was added he may want to be in here for that because okay. he had voiced a little some objection thank you yeah uh alderman petrelli thank you madam chairman um i would also uh i would suspect that the mayor would like to be here for item e um for our uh reading of resolution 2019-24 purchase of uh radio system for our public safety officials thank you and alderman sprouse just to keep things moving and from a procedural standpoint if i if we get to any item that passes where mr where mayor clary's vote would have had affected the outcome i'm going to ask for reconsideration if i voted in the affirmative and ask for that to be reconsidered so he can vote at a later time. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, are we are we voting on the main motion now? <laughs> Please bear with me. Okay. We need a motion to to go forward. Do I hear the motion to go move forward? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, all opposed? Oh, I'm sorry, I, Alderman Brown was in the queue. Are you in the queue? I'm in the queue for after you complete the vote. <laughs> okay. Um, do you, you did, okay, Alderman Brown. Thank you. Let me You're welcome. The, let me muddy the waters a little bit here, too. Um, consideration of trash collection data. Who's here for trash collection data? <coughs> Ms. <coughs> Burns, I knew you were here. You're always here for trash. Okay, we got we got some folks here. Uh, what I would like to ask is that are we actually going to vote on our trash service tonight, or is this a discussion so we can get to a vote in two weeks? Mr. Skidmore, I'll ask you that, and I know Marshall's here, so he could probably help there too. It's just a discussion. 
just discussion. Mm -hmm. I, here's what I'd like to see then, if I can ask you that, if we can move that discussion up, since we got some folks here, and we can have that discussion, and they can go to bed if they want to. Do you want Alderman Skidmore to reply? Yes. He's in the yes. queue. Uh, thank you. Alderman Skidmore. Uh, thank you. Um, if there's no other, what I would do then, if you want to do that, which I agree with you. Um, Make a motion. Uh, Okay, hold on just a second. Let me finish, and then if you want to speak to me, you can. I'm trying to do this. Um, but, no, I, I, no, he and I have a very good relationship back. He knows I'm not being overzealous with him. He'll know it when I am. But uh, I know. <laughs> and I know you will me too, my friend. But here's, here's what I want to do. And Scott's right. I'm going to make a motion, if it's okay with the board that we uh, bring this up to the top because it is one of the most important and I, I know people are tired of me saying this but the trash is the most one of the most important things this board can do for our city it's it, you know I've always said you keep your taxes as low as possible you keep your trash picked up you get adequate fire and police protection and you're doing your service to the people of Hendersonville or people of the wards you represent so if we're at that point now uh, Madam Vice Chair our Vice Mayor, I'll make a motion that we uh, move the tax data collection, um, the, the trash, up to up to right now. Second. To, to talk to, okay. to talk about it. All right. Any other discussion on that, Alderman Brown? Are you still in the queue? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. A Let me right shut there. you off. There. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, all in favor of moving the uh, consideration of trash collection data up to item should we say b or or a a1 uh, all in favor okay all opposed okay let that be the next item on the agenda uh consideration of trash collection data uh do you want to start uh alderman skidmore okay hold on let me turn you okay you're on thank you um tonight we have uh, Marshall, our public works uh, director for the city of Hendersonville, we had a special no called meeting, um, and then uh, I think the mayor's office sent out some data for everybody. Um, we were going to discuss it earlier tonight on a public works committee, but I felt with the mayor wanting uh, to send it out, uh, the information to all the board members, I felt that he kind of re uh, got that obligation to to, uh, to do those things for you all to take a look at. Um, unfortunately, we're at a circumstance now we need to move on because this is very important. Uh, so I'm going to leave it to, uh, to Marshall to let us know what the facts and figures that you all should already have that was emailed to you. If you weren't emailed to, please email me because we, apparently we're having some email problems tonight. So I'm okay, just saying. Mark so Marshall th Marshall you. you have the floor th th thank you um, and as Alderman Skidmore has said uh, there's some information in your packets that summarizes the the data that we've collected we had proposals turned in uh, back in the end of March um, and those the cost of those are included in those in that information uh, there, there's four main service options that we're considering or that the board's considering uh, there's you know, once a week curbside twice a week curbside once a week backdoor and twice a week backdoor um, and the, the main decision, um, really the main decision we're trying to focus on is, you know, what service option that we're going to select moving forward. Um, and right now the staff is re reviewing those proposals, uh, the qualifications, checking references, and we're evaluating those uh, as we speak and hope to have that done in, in the coming days. Um, I just ask if you have any questions for me tonight, um, please ask those. And we're, we're anticipating the next BOMA meeting to as have a goal of, of making that decision on the service um, but I, I'll be happy to entertain any any questions you may may have I just he really answered my question and I'll be quiet for hopefully the rest of the night on some issue I don't think there's anything else um, but uh, Marshall is correct they're in the process of now public works is going over to see uh, and get everything ready for the full board to make a decision on who we need to vote now we will we will have to vote at our next meeting because we're under the we're on our it'll be under a deadline we'll be under the gun to do it but we still have plenty uh, t of time and adequate time to make that decision so it'll be what april 26th is our next meeting i believe 
or the 23rd, I'm sorry, it's April 23rd, so be ready to have, uh, if you don't have any questions tonight, make sure you have your questions answered before the 23rd, because that'll be mo most important for us in Public Works about the trash. Thank I, you. I have a question, but Alderman Petrelli was in the queue first. So Alderman Petrelli. I'll defer to you, Madam Chairman. Oh, okay. And I'll go after um, you had a, com uh, a community meeting on this some time ago. Um, and what was the result? What are what are the citizens wanting to see? Are they wanting to see the same service that we have now uh, to eliminate backdoor, to go once a week, twice a week without backdoor, et cetera? Okay. Um, Thank you, Alderman Skidmore. I'm not on. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. It's okay. Oh. Just take your time. You're doing a great job. Because <laughs> that's a real good question. Thank you. Uh, am I, is it good now? Okay. Um, yes, we did in certain wards, but let, let me tell you what happened on that particular issue. But we've had a lot, a lot of the aldermen have had phone calls. We started in Ward 5 and Ward 6, and we were working our way towards this end of the, uh, this side of town. But, uh, and I, I did not vote for this, but in our, the committee's infinite wisdom, they wanted to, to get the garbage contract going. I wanted to pull back and let everybody have their own ward meetings. Uh, we were not able to do that. A lot of the wards weren't able to do it because uh, we just ran out of time because they want, you know, there were um, the mayor's office and two of the aldermen wanted to move it quickly and get it going. Uh, I thought that was unwise, but, you know, I'm, I'm a team player, and if that's the majority of the will, that's what I'm here for. And in saying that, uh, with me discuss discussing with a lot of the aldermen here and a lot of the constituency in Ward 5, which I was very grateful they had a great uh, turnout, and also in Ward 6, uh, and they did too, and I've had a lot of phone calls from everybody all over the city, uh, it's, it looks like it's going for once a week backdoor pickup. Now, I could be wrong. You know, you might call and say, Skidmore, you're out of your mind. That's the consensus or the, the feeling that I'm getting from uh, Alderman and also constituency in Hendersonville uh, as a whole. In my district, I mean, I don't know what Peg is feeling, but it's, it's basically like 50-50, really. It's kind of, it's, okay. I could get more sophisticated with it, but I'm not going to. Thank you answer me the question, you ask me the question, I won't take. Thank That's you, it. Alderman Skidmore. Uh, uh, Alderman Waters. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, can I address the chairman again? Yes, sir. You just mentioned meetings in Ward 5 and Ward 6. Well, I meant discussions. I've had people from your district call, you know. Called you? <laughs> Okay, I misunderstood it. I thought you had a meeting. Okay, uh, Vice Mayor, uh, yes. I don't. I don't think we need to keep putting this off. I, I've got some calls yes, about what we're going to do, and you're saying we, we, we'll know in at the next meeting. No. Uh, can no. I address the Public Works Director, Matt? Yeah. Yes, of course. Are you course. saying we'll have all all the figures together at the next meeting? No, all, all the in what is provided in your packet. Those are all the those are all the figures. Uh, what staff is doing now is is we're going in and evaluating. You know, we're, we're checking references. Uh, we're just you know, looking at each proposal you know, on its own merit and uh, trying to you know trying to score those the best we can. Um, that's that's kind of a separate separate thing that we're doing inside the city. But the the main thing is the the service options. That's going to be that's a you know, big decision that we're trying to have help with. I mean, well, if I may say so, Vice Mayor, it, this is a resolution, isn't it? It's, it's not an ordinance. It's going to be a resolution. We want to get one shot, right? There's well, well, tonight is just a discussion. I know. I'm, oh, I'm talking okay. about when it I'm comes sorry. up in two weeks, it, it'd be a resolution. Am I right or I, wrong? You're right. Yes, that's so, correct. Okay, so you're, you're saying that when it comes up, we got that one night to, to discuss it and vote on it. Yes. No. I, I need to know what kind of money we're talking about, how much savings. And, th and that's that's in your that's in your in your packet. No, I'm looking at it, uh, uh, Marshall. It's not broken down to how much we're saving on, on each one. Well, unless you got something I don't Where have. Is this There's. Stuff here? 
I don't know. Is, I, I don't. Well, I'm assuming what you have is what I have, but it may it may not be. Well, uh, I've got what you've got. Okay. There, there's a there's a paragraph. I don't. I'll just go ahead and you know, go ahead and read it. But it it states how much how much we spend on on trash Steve. collection. Steve. Um, and it's it's you know, almost four point seven million dollars that the city spends every year for trash. That's collection. what we spend right now. R right. Four, four, four to six ninety. For, it, cor correct. Okay. Now that's what we spend now. Um, right, that's what I want you to tell me, if you don't mind, uh, Vice Mayor. If I may ask him another question. Right. Okay. The, Let, let's let's just take let's just take item A. No no names. Just item A. You got it. Item. Let's take number the first one. Don't call a name. I'm just going to say item A. Okay. Uh, we got his bid for back door once a week, right? Right. Tell me right now how much take what we're paying now and what he's what this bid is. How much we're going to save? That's what I want. I, I, I'm a money. I'm a, I'm like my my colleague in, in Ward right. One down here. I'm a money man. Right. I want to save the, every dime I can. Well. Um, well, I, the, the, you know, the table below that was provided you know, represents the yearly cost for, from each vendor for the, the type of service. Um, and so that's, you know, that was based on their you know, monthly unit price that they included in their bid. And I tried to Page 36. Ex expand on it, but I've, it, I've got it. Uh, 36. I've got it. Page 36. I've got it. Oh. But my question is, if we take item A, I'm not calling any names. Yeah. What we're paying today and what that bid is, is that how much are we saving? We uh, on 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 back door. Right. I did not. The, the last sentence of that paragraph it kind of spells out the potential cost savings for the once per week curbside and the once per week back door. Um, that that's the that's the total amount that we would save based on the low bid. For those for those options, what, what I can I think what you're asking what I can do is I can provide a I can provide even more I can provide more information that spells out you know the the, the cost savings from each you know from, from each vendor. Now, 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 I mean, now I, you're talking. Now you're talking. Yeah, yeah. But I don't want to wait till the next meeting. Well, I, I can do that tomorrow and email. I mean, I can. I can well, un unless email these it. other people have got it, maybe they're smarter than but, I am. I don't know, have it. Yeah, I mean it's. Yeah, it's it's not hard for me to provide that. I, you know, there, we we know the total. You know, we know the total amount that we spend now. Yeah. And we can take, you know, we, we can take the numbers in the table and subtract and okay and to know how much we're. And saving, you can but, you can send them out. Yeah, I, I can send, send that week. tomorrow. Okay. That's yeah. Okay. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Yeah. Thank you, <clears throat> Alderman Brown. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, Says the current the city currently spends four million six hundred ninety thousand dollars. Is that correct? That's just for collection. That's for collection. Yeah. Okay. So if we went to back door once per week, in as Mr. Water says number A, without using their name, we would uh, save about a million and a half bucks. Right. Yes. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Okay. Simple um, okay. So yeah. we can kind of figure that down through there. I think. Yeah. I have a, I have a couple suggestions. Sure. And uh, it seems to be like a Facebook world anymore. Uh, there's a lot of stuff goes on Facebook. A lot of stuff that shouldn't go on Facebook. I think one thing that maybe should go on Facebook on the city's website is uh, what kind of trash service would you like, and give those put that on there. I don't know who our admin is, but put that on there, and put. Backdoor once per week, backdoor twice per week. Yeah, like a, like a, just t take a poll, I guess. Just kind of take a yeah, poll. Yeah. We don't need to know why you want once a week or why you want twice a week. Just here's what I think I want. Okay. Uh, I would also ask maybe that you you put something up on Channel 3. There's a lot of folks still watch Channel 3. And I don't, I don't necessarily want to tell them to go to Facebook, but I don't want your phone to ring. So right, right. is there a way we could Wait put... It put uh, an email in sure. your office on there to uh, email our office with your preference of sure. once a week, back door, curbside, or whatever. I don't know how, what kind of response that would get, but it might still yeah, give yeah. us a little bit better feel for numbers on, on what people are really wanting. That's all I had. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Petrelli. Thank you, Madam Chairman. So 
in the event if we did go to curbside and we need to come up with a process for identifying backdoor pickup yeah. what are right. those credentials right um, in the last last paragraph there, there's a we don't have a a formal process that is something the city would have to decide on like if we did do curbside but you know for example there'd be medical exemptions you know for people along driveways I mean there'd be and there'd be some criteria that we would set that you know people would then you know, let us know if they needed that if they qualified and then we would just add them to the list okay so is that something that will come out of public works or yeah. we're gonna decide as a no. whole or or we, we we can take it to public works committee. Right. Okay. Um, a recommendation. And, yeah. That would be great. Yeah. Good question. Like the city of Gallatin has a similar process in place for, for that, so. We can. Yeah, because I mean, there's multiple yeah. reasons why people need backdoor. Right. Oh yeah. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Alderman Woodcock. Thank you, Vice Mayor. <clears throat> uh, I have lived in two of the largest uh, subdivisions in Ward Five. I have relatives in two other ones. Uh, my experience has been most residents do not know they pay for backdoor service, therefore they carry it to the curb. And anyone feel free to drive through on a Thursday morning uh, or a Monday morning, you'll see the same as far as the developments go. I will be honest, I was three years into my term as an alderman before I found out. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And you may remember this, Marshall. When I found out, I said, well, I, I've, even when I leave it there on accident, it doesn't get picked up. And so the next pickup, I noticed that the top bag had been removed, but none of the other trash. And it was because my container was too large to be rolled from here to Scotty to be collected. So that bothered me. So my experience has been the vast majority of Ward 5 right. takes their garbage to the curb because, A, they don't know any better, or their container is too large to be wheeled down 20 feet of a driveway. Uh, so I... I have found that most of my residents, and I won't speak for Jonathan what he's experienced, they prefer curbside because that's what they're doing already. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a great debate on one or two times, like that's almost an even split there. But again, the vast majority curbside because they're already doing it. Thank you. Alderman Belt. Yeah, just real quickly on uh, if we happen to do a survey and you're going to talk about on Facebook because it's a relatively simple issue about um you know what people think one side how much money saved all that they're going to want to know where that money's going so is money going to us is it going back to the city is it going back to the people who are actually paying the fees i think that that would be really important so and I, as, and for my uh people in my ward and steve brown's ward we have a lot of long driveways and we do have you know older people and I, I do get feedback that they'd still like it's not a hill I'm dying on but it, it's it, it is important to them that they're able to take it out I mean somebody come pick it up so from the back yeah. sorry good thank you Alderman Skidmore yes thank you thank you this is one of the reasons why that I was hoping and I think it's going this way by the board's actions tonight is we would have a vote uh, or a recommendation in two weeks because it allows each alderman to go back into their district and say, hey, look, you know, this is where a lot of your money goes within the city. It's one of the largest investments yeah. that you've got, believe it or not, from your local city government. So I implore the board to go back into their and, and also have the their constituency. I mean, the whole city. I know our, all our phones now will be ringing off the wall, but that's what we get paid for. And... Uh, yeah, I know it's not a lot, but that's we took when we took that oath. That's what we decided. You know, we knew the better and the worse sort of thing. When you got married to the city of Hendersonville for four years, mm -hmm. you know, it's better or worse. And this is one of those times you, your phone rings. Mine rings all the time. Some people just hang up and don't say anything. And you know, my voicemail kicks over and they just hang it up. You know, but I know I look at the number and you guys know too that it's so and so's. You know who it is, so you call them back and they want to talk about trash pick up um, but my point is this if we can just go ahead these are all great questions tonight and ones that we in public works need to discuss and and look at have the public works department take a look at it and then at our next meeting we'll be able to have a more definitive answer from your ward and uh, and you know it may be something completely opposite of what you're even thinking tonight so um, I hope that all these questions that that 
is what the results are this evening is the fact that we'll go ahead and push it off two weeks, go into your ward or have them call you, uh, and our folks call us or all through the city and let us know because you're really our answer. I mean, it's, it's we do what you want us to do and, and when it comes to garbage refu or refuse. And uh, that's all I forgot to say okay. as to that. I have a comment after Alderman Sprouse. Alderman Sprouse. Thank you. I appreciate the conversation and the questions because I think it's, it's going to be a significant change. One of the things culturally about Hendersonville that's it's turning odd is the backdoor pickup. And as you all have said, that there are folks who didn't know that. And um, I have both my parents and my sister's family have moved as longtime residents have moved to newer developments. And one of the things that they've commented about is that neighbors didn't know and they're left behind. I think that we will adequately address those with, if we go to curbside, those who have special needs, um, those will be taken care of. We'll have accommodations. One thing I think we need to consider, though, is um, an aesthetic and transportation issue. One of the things you have to deal with, I'm, we talk a lot of times about streetscapes, and they'll give us drawings and architectural renderings of what subdivisions are going to look like. And we know when there's a front-loaded garage, you really have to imagine what the house is going to look like with three cars parked in the driveway out front. We need to start looking what's it going to look like on a streetscape when you look down a road and you see garbage can after garbage can after garbage can. How does that affect that? And is that something we're prepared for from an aesthetic standpoint? Is it um, something we're, we're prepared for from a transportation standpoint because then you have to look at walkability of neighborhoods and what do you do if it's on the sidewalk? What do you do if there's not a sidewalk yet in the neighborhood? How do you deal with accessibility that way? And then the third issue is um, are there regulations to have to deal with that? That if someone brings a garbage can to the curb, is it supposed to be placed in a certain spot so he doesn't worry about interfering with traffic, whether it's pedestrian or vehicular? And then there's certain periods of time that they don't leave the garbage can out for the entire week. And those are just things we're going to have to consider if that's the motion, that, if that's the direction that we take. Um, I'm sure some HOAs probably already have some rules, but the you know, majority mm -hmm. of Hendersonville yeah. is not under an HOA. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And my comment is, um, surprisingly, um, I did not know until several years ago, I was under the impression that the garbage fee was a complete 100% pass-through fee to the consumer, to the, yeah, to the residents. But it's not. Um, about seven hundred or $800,000 is, is absorbed by the city itself and I wasn't aware of that I was under the impression that it was a pure pass-through so if we do um, when we do uh, consider this and vote to move it forward I would really like to see it hundred percent pass through to the residents as it should be and by doing this it looks like we may if we adopt other than twice a week back door it looks like it'll it'll pretty much be kind of a neutral revenue effect on it. So that I'm uh, that makes me happy because we have a lot of senior citizens that the tax freeze does not affect a garbage fee on their tax bill. Uh, that's all I have to say. No? Alderman Skid uh, Sprouse. Thank you for addressing the issue. This is something that's come up the last couple of years about the um, about the, the trash fee and the portion that's in the tax rate and the portion that's a direct pass through. And uh, Mr. Skidmore and I are the only ones who were at the table when the current system was approved. Do you remember this? It yes, was sir. probably sure, you're right. 2004. Yeah, and here's the issue. I'm going to talk about the, the late Jack Smith, War II Alderman, the first War II Alderman I served with. And Jack was with someone who wanted to roll the thing completely into the tax rate because he recognized that when you have a couple of hundred dollar annual fee, flat fee, placed upon a lower value or lower assessed value property, it could be easily a third or 50 percent of their tax bill. Whereas if you went to a larger property, more expensive property, newer property, then it could be 
10 percent of their tax bill mm -hmm. and he felt that that disproportionately um, hurt older residents longer term residents people who may have been in their house for 40 years 50 years and there was a bunch of back and forth about should it be completely in the tax rate should it be completely a pass-through fee for service and the compromise that we, we struck that night yes. Mr. Forsyth, I believe, was the one who did it, was that we took the portion that was closely as possible directly related to collection. And that's what we said we're going to do for fee for service. And the other attributes having to deal with disposal and tipping fees and all these other things, particularly at the, because at the time, the, um, this, the city was under the resource authority and we had, we had flow control. All garbage had to go there. So even if you were a commercial hauler, picking up at office buildings and restaurants and stores, you still had to take it to the resource authority. And so that was a considerable expense, and that's why that portion was in the tax rate. We still have some obligation to the resource authority. It's not in operations, but we still from time to time have to write a pretty good check to help with maintenance and maintain that. So if we do reverse that and go to a straight pass-through, that number is going to go up. And like Mrs. Cunningham mentioned, it's going to be a number that cannot be frozen if you're a senior who has a below average income in our community and has your property tax frozen. And so not only will it be a fee that will disproportionately hit people in older residents, smaller residents, smaller pieces of property, it would be something that we could not, could not freeze. Mm -hmm. So thanks. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other discussion on that? Marshall, anything else? Okay. That's, that's it. All right, moving on. Do we need to Marshall? Do we need to make a motion to no, we don't have to do anything. No, it's so just for a discussion. Just consideration, discussion. Thank you very much for Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, second reading of Ordinance 2019-13, an ordinance accepting and appropriating a donation in the amount of $1,000 from Mary's Magical Place Committee to be used for flood damages deductible. Alderman Bolt. Second. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor of uh, second reading of Ordinance 2019-13, say aye. Uh, all opposed? Okay, that passed unanimously. Uh, reading of Resolution 2018-73, Resolution Establishing Fees to be Collected by the Building and Codes Department for the Administration and Enforcement of All Construction Codes. And I could, okay, thank you. Any discussion on that? We have updated our codes from many, many years ago to be a more compliant with today's. Oh, Alderman Woodcock. More of a comment. I'm just uh, happy to report that our staff worked well with local developers when coming up with these fees. Just want to make sure everyone's aware of that. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Woodcock. Anything else? Okay, all in favor of reading of uh, uh, the resolution 2018 73, say aye. Aye. All, in, all opposed? Okay, that passed unanimously. Reading of or resolution 2019-17, a resolution authorizing the transfer of $50,000 from the Information Technology Department salary line item to the Information Technology Department telephone expense line item. Do I hear a motion? Okay, any discussion? I think they, is that the telephone system that they just installed? Yes, ma'am. Several weeks ago? Okay. All right, nobody in the queue, so uh, all in favor of uh, Resolution 2019-17, say aye. Aye. Okay, all opposed? That passed unanimously. Uh, now, we want to wait for the mayor to come back for this, for this next one. Resolution, the, the, it's for the, um, it's for the radios, item E. Okay. Do you think we can skip to item F while we wait for the mayor? Because it was for uh, Alderman Waters wanted to um, make an announcement for item F. Okay. Alderman Waters. Waters. Thank you. 
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Vice Mayor. I remembered. <laughs> now, this is just a, a couple of comments I want to make. Uh, first, uh, I've had several, even tonight, in our meeting and several calls in the last few days about my cohort here, Eddie Robinson. Now, some of you may know uh, what what's happened. Uh, some of you may not know, but I'm not I'm not here to go into the medical uh, terms of, of his condition. Um, but but he's had a hard time. Okay, I, I'll leave it at that. Uh, we spoke last evening. Um, <clears throat> he his voice was stronger over the phone. He, his voice was much stronger than it was the week before. And he said, uh, he said, Jim, I'm getting better. He said, and and everybody knows Eddie knows he's a he's a he's a Christian man. Man, he was raised. That's the way he was raised. And he says it's all in God's hands. And so uh, I'm saying this tonight to ask you to keep Eddie and his wife in your prayers. And he, I don't think he'll be back at the next BOMA meeting, but hopefully in, in the next one he will. So that's one thing I want to mention. Another thing, <clears throat> um, Ward 6 would have a town hall meeting. It would be... Uh, August, I'm sorry, April the 18th at 6 p.m. It will be at Durham Farms Community House. Uh, again, it's for, this is for Ward 6. Uh, we've all already invited the department directors from each department to come, and we've got responses from all of them that they would be there. So again, Ward 6, town hall meeting, April the 18th, 6 p.m. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Waters. Okay. Um, well, all the other items really concern the mayor. Excuse me. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry. Alderman Skidmore. Yes, thank you. Um, could you kind of, um, and, I, and I, I'm kind of putting you on the spot, and I apologize if I've done that. Are there, what, what do we have remaining on the agenda that, I mean, do you know right off? Yeah, I have it right. It's a reading of the, uh, the radios. Okay, yes, ma'am. The resolution for the radios, um, transferring uh, from two line items to, an, to, to one other. Okay. Uh, the hiring of an outside attorney. Yes, uh, retirement benefits, uh, discussion of rescheduling the June 11th meeting to June 13th due to the symphony at Rock Castle event. So moved. And the sp Seriously, I mean, the mayor's the sponsor of that. We know his position on it. I'll be happy to make the motion for that. Oh, okay. All right. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Go to the event. We went last year. We sponsored it. It's awesome. Go. Okay. Uh, all in favor of moving the June 11th, 2019 meeting to June 13th, say aye. 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 Okay. That, oh, I'm sorry. Andy was in the... That's fine. I apologize. Well, I was going to say on the on the two items that I brought up, one of them, I, I, I don't think it involves the mayor in any way, so I, we, could, we could do the one on the retirement, I think. Um, you know? So if you want to go ahead with that one, we can, and we can defer... I'd, I'd consider deferring the other one till the next meeting, but if we have another thing on the on the on the agenda that we have to hit, I'll wait on that. But on the one relative to the retirement uh, for city employees, two city employees, I think we could address that. Okay, Alderman Woodcock. Considering the history, I was just going to make it clear I would not be here June thirteenth. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate that, Alderman Woodcock. No conspiracy. Well, we'll put that in the Unless minutes. We'll have our city recorder put that in the minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, we have a motion. Uh, Alderman Edwards, is this to the motion for Mr. Bolt? Yeah, I, I would request that the mayor be present for the employee retirement um, issues. I think he would want to uh, at least be present and have an opportunity to speak to that. So... I would be opposed. Five-minute recess? Wait a minute. Uh, can I speak? Well, Alderman 
Okay. Yeah. I'll defer to. Oh, good. Okay. I'll defer to, to Alderman Edwards on that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what what where you're where you're going. Well, I, was just, I was just responding to your. Uh, <laughs> you got me on. Wait a minute. Well, hold on. walkie talkie. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll just talk. I was just responding to your motion, and I was saying. Yeah. I, I, what I was going to say is what I was yeah. requesting. I don't see how. It, I don't know that it involves it, but I'll defer that if you would prefer. Well, I mean, we can vote. Just, that was my response. Okay. And I wouldn't be opposed. That's fine. So. We'll wait. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'll defer. Okay. Alderman Sprouse. Sprouse. It's been an hour and 20 minutes since we took the recess so the mayor could find the email. If we're holding up city business so he can find an email that he wanted to show me, I'm happy to say he can show me tomorrow. He can show me next week. Yeah. He, he, stop yes, the please. search and come back to the table. If we need to take yeah. 30 seconds um, okay. to so go say, hey, come back and we'll, we'll deal with this later. We got to deal with the important business. Who can do that? Okay. We'll have Jonathan tell us a story. I've got a story. Wait, okay. wait a minute. I have, I have Alderman Waters in the queue. Oh, <clears throat> thank you, Vice Mayor. I was just going to say, let, let's go ahead and defer uh, Alderman Bolt's uh, two items to the next meeting. And let, let's go ahead and adjourn and, and get home. Uh, these people are tired, I know, of listening to, to us sit up here and talk about certain things. <coughs> so it would be my motion that we go ahead and, and if, if Alderman both will agree to it, <clears throat> let's just close it and let's move on because all we're doing is sitting up here just talking about an individual and it, it's not worth the time and we need to get going. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Okay, thank you. Alderman Bolt? Uh, that's all I said, of course, was uh, I, I defer the one. That's possibly not the other. And the other one, and one of them, I, I said I didn't need the mayor. Russ thinks, or Alderman Edwards thinks we do, and I'm deferring to him. And, and don't we have to vote on the, the radios anyway? Yes, the radio. So, I mean, there's another item on the agenda anyway, so uh, I, I, I won't defer those because we have something else to deal with anyway. So. And I think those are timely, and I think those are things that have to be voted on. Alderman Sprouse? For my understanding of the issue, we have two employees who have questions about receiving benefits that they have been paying for for a long time. And the city will basically have a city decision to make if we're going to defend our policy. I think we should at least have the discussion. And then when we get to the point if there's time to make an act, take action, then the board can decide if we're going to take action on it. I think it's at least important to have the discussion. We spent, what, 10 minutes adding this item to the agenda. If the one that isn't timely, isn't directly related to employee benefits, um, can wait. Let's do that. But if there's one that's directly related out of respect to our employees and anyone for the city who would want to know that we would be prepared to uh, fulfill promises made, um, we should have that conversation. Okay. Do we have to vote on whether we do this or not? <laughs> okay. Well, go at it. Alderman Petrelli. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you, Vice Mayor Cunningham. <laughs> oh, okay. The sponsor, who's the sponsor of it, though? Am I? Oh, Alderman Bolt is going to introduce it. And then Alderman Petrelli, I get to you in just a, just a second. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to move through this as quickly as possible. And if we don't have to stay for the rest of it, that's fine by me. But it's kind of my attention that... Um, the city's retirement coverage as it relates to both the city judge and also the asserted the city attorney um, there is a question as to whether or not they may be now eligible for retirement and that's really not something that um, there's no reason for that and what I'd like to do is be able to authorize human resources to get counsel for both the judge and the city attorney to be able to defend that. 
from Bassberry and Sims is the uh, firm, and I think there's twenty thousand dollars in per professional services in the budget. Not to sue them, just to just to consult with them on that issue. It's okay. handled on appeal to TCRS. There is an appeal that's been made. What he said. Uh, this is oh, wait a minute. I just turn you on here. Okay. This is an issue that came up a few months ago for some reason that uh, TCRS has accepted the city's money since 2001, thousands and thousands of dollars, and have never questioned coverage. And for some reason. Back in the fall, they decided that the city attorney and city judge apparently were, uh, or at least the city attorney, were independent contractors instead of employees, even though we've been employees since 2001. <coughs> and it's just led to a real problem for both of these positions because what they ever do with one position, they have to do with the other. And the city has provided this benefit for all these years, and it, it seems that representation is needed to, to make this benefit as it's been promised since 2001 to these two positions. And it's unfortunate that I'm, you know, I'm in one of those positions, but I'm just trying to explain what happened. And uh, there's an appeal pending before TCRS and uh, Bassberry and Sims has been consulted and they said they'd be happy that the, the city's already a client of Bassberry and Sims and they would be happy to, to handle that. They said that should not be something that employees should have to pay for if it's a benefit the city has authorized by ordinance since 2001, which the city has. So we have that's, a copy of that. Sorry. Well, you want to copy the ordinance? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'd be happy to get it for you. And I have other questions. Okay. I have to go in order. You're number three in the queue. Is that okay? Okay, Alderman Sprouse. Thank you. I was going to say a few of these things. It's unfortunate that our attorney would have to say it. If this was a situation that was affecting our police chief or fire chief or any other employee, our legal staff would be the people who would pursue that on behalf of the city. Um, it's not really appropriate for the city attorney to be representing something regarding the city attorney when he's the employee in question. Um, this is not a question of whether or not it's an employee receives a benefit. It's a question of whether or not the city defends a decision that it made in 2001 and acted accordingly. I will tell you in the interest of full disclosure, in 2001, I voted against this. Mr. Smith, the previously mentioned Mr. Smith, and I voted against this. But I will tell you, once this board makes a decision, it is the authority of each of the following board, whether it is a contract or a commitment, to honor that. And so I, I, we need to be able, once we make a decision, once money has been committed, once promises have been made to any employee, it is now the, it is now the responsibility of the city to follow through on those decisions and that authority and those promises. Did you want to comment? No. Okay. Alder Alderman Edwards. Okay, so are we proposing for Bassberry to represent us before TCRS or give some kind of opinion letter as to whether the, you, the attorney and the judge are independent contractors or employees entitled to retirement? They would be representing the city with TCRS on this appeal of their eligibility determination. Okay. That's all it would be. Okay, I, and I would... Um, Respectfully request that the um, the mayor be present to make any comments on this and, and to vote. I think it's a pretty important. Let's talk topic. about the mayor. So speak any appearance. All right. Yeah. Welcome back, this. Mayor. We already did the meeting. We, you know, moved it to June 13th. Okay. That was done. Okay. And then uh, he, Walter and Water, did his deal. There. Okay. And now we're on the uh, retirement thing. Did we do hire an outside attorney? No. Yeah, that, that yeah. Is, is that next? And we didn't. Things. We didn't do E, and we didn't do those two. I got you. They're waiting for you. And we didn't do that. Okay. So next is E. Uh, no, there's still the retirement thing. <coughs> 
Oh, that, and we're in the middle of that right now. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And they wanted your input. You wanted my input. <laughs> Russ did. <laughs> Alderman Edwards. Comments. Just present. An opportunity to give any comments. Um, what is what is this about? Sorry, I know it was it just came up at general committee tonight. Um, yeah, help me out. What is this? What is, what is this resolution about? I'll be happy to answer that. Both. Is it Mr. from Bo? Mr. Bolt, yeah. go ahead. The sponsor. Okay. Yeah, the, go ahead. Yeah, the question is as to the eligibility of longtime employees, both the city judge and the city um, attorney, relative to retirement with TCRS. There's some question as to their eligibility now, and all we're requesting is that Bassberry and Sims are allowed to represent them through, I guess, professional services with um, uh, through human resources. Okay. Um, here are my thoughts on that. Um, I had to make some copies of some items and find some items. Um, so uh, when I came to off in office, I realized that we had a uh, uh, that we had a budget for our city attorney and city judge, and uh, and of course all our positions in our in our budget with our city attorney. It's approximately one hundred ten thousand dollars. Now it's one hundred twelve thousand um, dollars. I can't account for what we get for that. The city judge, he's in court. He has documentation. Um, he hears cases. He has an employee with him. Um, we have paperwork from him as far as what he does, and I know that. I'm going to go on. Um, with, with, um, with all our other employees, they either clock in or clock out. With all our vendors, um, we know we get a statement of what they've done for us. Uh, and in terms of this situation, it became apparent after I got some letters about retirement. Um, our city attorney and I sat down about two years ago, um, and I was trying to determine um, if he was a, uh, an independent contractor or if he's an employee. And that's important when it comes to retirement. Um, the, uh, we had conversations about the differences of those and uh, I couldn't really get an answer from him at that time which one he was. Now keep in mind that I have documentation for our vendors, for our part-time employees, for our full-time employees, for everybody that gets money from the city. Everybody in every company. The only documentation I had in this situation was the total number of hours that was being billed. That was it. That was it. And I was expected to approve time for that and approve money for that up to $110,000 now $112,000 per year. I had a hard time with that. I can't account for where that money is going. And I hope that you would have a hard time with that as well. As I said, we sat down, uh, tried to work some things out, um, talked about setting regular hours, and um, that was something that was rejected. I asked the city attorney about having regular hours so I could account for some of that. Um, never talked about clocking in or clocking out, but maybe setting office hours. And um, he told me that he was available by text or phone, and I let him know that we had no, we had nobody other, nobody else, employee or vendor that had that relationship with the city. Is that they didn't have time that they were supposed to come in, didn't have a, a, an expectation uh, from a supervisor. Nobody else had that opportunity. I had a hard time with that. That I was still just being given a total number of hours, and I was expected to sign the check for that to approve that time. That's not much accountability there. I then looked into the difference between employees and contractors and talked with, um, uh, and again, this is about two years ago, and talked with our HR uh, manager, our HR director, and saw that it was very hard to tell what our city attorney was. He doesn't have set hours. He doesn't have a, su he doesn't have a supervisor. Um, he takes vacations when he needs to. He has similar positions with other cities, which lead me to believe that he's an independent contractor. I'm not qualified to make that decision, though. So I continued to have some conversations with him. And then as we, um, uh, as we move forward, one of the things that became apparent was there were some other aldermen who were unhappy about some of the things we were getting from our city attorney. And I felt like it was my responsibility to do something about that. And a great example is uh, with the fire hall and with the first round of bids with design, with design build. And a couple, of, uh, a couple of aldermen asked me how that happened in that we had staff go forward with design build process. Legally, we could not do that. As well as staff concerned about the, uh, 
uh, some of the delays there. I had aldermen that were concerned about the product and the quality of work we were getting from our city attorney. Meanwhile, I'm expected to, without any documentation, spend $110 per hour with no documentation. I had a very hard time with that. And I hope that you would too. Uh, we don't spend $110,000 on many items. And this is something I felt raised the level of I need to pay more attention to it. Um, about this time, um, we also, in that situation with the design build, we also had a threatened lawsuit. So I thought, I need to find out a little bit more than this. Fortunately, I was able to get a letter um, that was written uh, to and from TCRS, our consolidated retirement system. Uh, first, I was able to get, a, to get an email as I'm still trying to figure out what kind of authority I have to find greater accountability in this. Again, $110,000, $112,000, all I get is a number that were of hours that have been worked, no documentation. So TCRS provided to me uh, an email that was written by our city attorney in September of uh, 2018, as I'm still trying to figure out, is he an independent contractor or is he an employee? And this is from our city attorney. As we discussed earlier this week, I'm writing you to explain my situation with TCRS. I was employed as city attorney for Hendersonville, Tennessee on February 10, 1987. From that time until July 1, 2001, I was treated as an independent contractor by the city. Since that time, I've been treated as an employee. It doesn't say I've been an employee. It says I've been treated as an employee. So then I got another letter from TCRS. And this is, uh, I think the, this is page two of three. As, as our city attorney had questions about his eligibility for retirement. Dear Mr. Bradley, as my understanding you inquired about establishing retirement credit, credit in TCRS for your service as a city attorney for the city of Hendersonville from February 1987 to July 2001. It goes on to give sort of um, a detail about uh, state law. And then on page two, as I said, um, it says, while reviewing this matter, TCRS was advised by the Tennessee Department of Labor that the city has not been reporting you to the department and presumably not to the IRS as an employee to the city. Then I started to get worried about liability. Is that not knowing whether or not this position is an employee or an independent contractor, I became very worried about the possibility that we had some liability with the IRS because unclear with them, and we had liability with the Department of Labor because it's unclear with them, and I was having to find this out from TCRS. Um, we, uh, at the beginning of this year, we started execute time. Every employee of the city clocks in and clocks out. Our city judge clocks in and clocks out. It was an opportunity for us to have accountability for everybody, absolutely everybody. And at that time, I thought, we need to sit down and try to figure this out and uh, um, send an email to our city attorney. I think I want to say it was January 2nd. I could not find that as much as, as, much as I tried to look just recently um, about my feeling that we needed more detail on his billing. Just so we get detail for any, any outside vendor, just like we get detail from supervisors for their employees. I felt like we needed more detail on his work. And as I said, I still had this question of do we, have li do we have liability with the IRS and Department of Labor? I just didn't know, but it was a very big concern of mine. So um, I started to talk to Tennessee Municipal League, uh, MTAS, the, um, uh, our, our auditors, and I talked to uh, the Comptroller's office. Repeatedly I got this advice. They told me that they could give me some general direction, but in order for them to do their job, they suggested that I consult our city attorney. And then, of course, they realized you can't consult your city attorney on a question of the employment status and the accountability of your city attorney. I was very much lost back in January and February trying to, trying to figure this out. And again, very concerned about liabilities we might have. And certainly a conflict of interest where I couldn't just go to our city attorney and ask him to explain these things and how other city attorneys worked. So I started talking to some other city attorneys and got some records of how they provide their billing information, which, which has details as far as what they did, who they talked to, what service they provided. Again, we didn't have that. All we had was just a total number of hours billed. Typically, um, on our online service, is I would see in front of me that, uh, actually, first, it was just paper. I would see in front of me that 
10 hours have been worked one week, 20 hours have been worked another week, the total was 30, I was expected to approve that time without any explanation of what, he, what service we have prov been provided. So I started talking to some other attorneys, just, uh, just them providing me favors as far as what they could provide me with the way that they build their cities. And the detail that they provided was, uh, was very, very helpful. Um, some of them detail as far as a, every six minutes, some every 10 minutes, every, some every 15 minutes, but explain what they did for that time and the time that they build the city. Again, we didn't have that. So I, uh, in January, emailed our city attorney and said that this is something that we need to do. And uh, didn't get any response, followed up, uh, I think about a week later, didn't get any response. Uh, gave it to him in his folder, um, didn't get a response, and then finally he, uh, uh, he scheduled a meeting with me and Peter Voss and came, and came to talk about that. Sort of in the meantime of this, um, is either MTAS or TML recommended Mark Nolan to me. Again, I was running the situation where everybody I talked to said, this is the advice we can give you generally, but we can't give you specific advice. Specific advice in this situation, you talk to your city attorney, and then of course they catch themselves. So they suggested Mark Nolan. Knowing that I had money in my budget to hire professional services, I then, knowing that I had money to, to hire somebody like this in professional services, I then reached out, out to Mark Nolan and showed him what we, showed him what our charter was, showed him what our laws were, showed him what our policies were, asked him if I could hire him, and he said yes. What I also did was I reached out to our city attorney and asked him, can I hire, can I or my staff hire consultants with budgeted money without the approval of committees or the board? And he responded, in my opinion, you and your staff can hire consultants without the approval of committees or the board with money appropriated in the budget ordinance for hiring such consultants. Such I, felt, I, I, felt, I felt that I have permission from our city attorney, John, hold, excuse me. I felt like I have permission from our city attorney to go out and hire professional services. I also felt like I had it from MTAS and TML and from the attorney that we hired after he had looked at what the possibilities for me. Again, one of my biggest fears here was the liability that the city was in as well as the accountability that we had. Um, when uh, our city attorney and Peter Voss and I sat down, I want to say this is this is probably eight weeks or so ago. I could not find the specific February time we sat, uh, that we specifically Accurate. sat down. Accurate. February fifth. You want to tell the story? Tell it right. We met February fifth. So when we sat down, I asked him about providing documentation for his time, and I asked him what it would take to do that, and asked him about his hours and about being treated <laughs> and having some greater accountability. One of the things he told me was that he couldn't provide me information about his time because I'm not his client. The board is his client. And I asked, can you provide the board information about your time? And he said no because that would violate attorney-client privilege. So I'm sort of stuck yeah, here in that I'm looking for some accountability but I can't get any of it. And it seems that I'm expected to approve time and I have no choice. I can't get more accountability, and I'm just expected to do this. Even though some aldermen had previously raised questions about the service and about some of the items that we expected from our city attorney. In the email that I sent him, um, it was very much about our budget and that I felt it was my responsibility as the fiduciary officer of the city of Hendersonville that for the $112,000 that goes out, we should have some, we should have some documentation there. And all we had was an online figure of what was being charged us and no documentation. That is unlike any other vendor, part-time, full-time employee that we have in the city. Everybody else we have some sort of documentation on. I mean, as the leader of this city, I felt like that was important for me to go out and do and get some sort of documentation. One of the other things that he mentioned to me in that meeting was that in order for him to provide that documentation, it would cost us another $300, $500 per week because of the time that it would take to, for him to put that together. So he couldn't just provide the documentation like other city attorneys had to their cities, but they would cost us an additional $300, $500 a week. We also talked about him keeping office hours here so that, so that I would know when I could reach him and the alderman would know when, when he could be reached. And he said that would be wasteful because it would end up with him sitting in his office without work to do. 
So, Mark Nolan came to me recommended, it's either from TML or MTAS, possibly the uh, uh, comptroller's office. Mark has worked for other cities. He's worked for several cities. One of the first things that Mark did was he sent me an agreement. This is what I'm going to do for you. This is what it's going to cost. This is what the expectations that you can have of me. When he gave that agreement, he said to me, this is what you should have from your city attorney, just like many other city attorneys have. So he suggested that I seek that, a fee agreement from our city attorney, and that I give a deadline for when I expected bill, the billable, the detailed information to pay him. So I gave him the, uh, uh, the deadline of April 2nd, and Mark and I met a couple times to help me understand this process to make sure that this is okay for me to do. And one of the things that Mark explained to me was that I had a responsibility to account for the money that goes out of the city. And all I could do so far was say that we paid the city attorney the amount that he charged us. That's all the accountability I could get. So I gave that deadline of April 2nd, and that was probably end of March or so. And uh, April 2nd, uh, just before it was April 2nd came and went, and I didn't get either a fee agreement or uh, detailed hours for the month of March. That evening, I got an email, which he asked to meet with me again on, uh, on the following Friday. And I committed to doing that, even though he had missed the deadline for those things. Um, I heard back from him Friday morning that he could not meet. I suggested Friday at 2.30, that was last week. Heard back from him Friday morning that he could not meet because uh, Peter Voss uh, was un unavailable and he had another, and uh, our city attorney had another commitment. Yeah. I had a meeting with Peter Voss at 2 o'clock um, and our meeting was supposed to be at 2.30 and I, I, I'm not real sure what, what the other commitment was, but I wish we would have gotten to have that meeting. Um, so that's where we are right now. Um, and it seems like that if our city attorney, regardless of who it is, that if they refuse to do the work that we set as a priority and they send us a bill, we have to pay him. That's troubling for me. We have no other arrangement like that in the city. That somebody sends us a bill, even though we may not be happy with their work, we may not share their priorities, but we have to pay that. And that's troubling to me. So I still have this question of liability. I have not contacted uh, TCRS one way or the other to represent, represent us. I have appreciated the information they sent me. Um, but again, this is, this is very much about accountability and the liability. I do feel like our city attorney should not speak on this. <laughs> of course you do. Well, let me explain why. Let me explain why. Your lies so, there? so let me explain why. Is he speaking as really? a city, is he speaking as, as giving us advice? Or is he speaking lobbying us and helping us and making a decision he wants us to make? I very much feel like we need Mark Nolan to come in here and help us with this. And, or somebody else. But we need somebody that can be objective. Just as the folks at TML, Comptroller's Office, MTAS said, we realize that there's a conflict of interest. You need to go out and find somebody else. And they recommended that. And then when they do that, then our city, and then our, and then our city attorney would certainly be given the opportunity to speak about this. But he should right now not be speaking as both the city attorney and as the person who wants to lobby us to work on his retirement benefits. Certainly should not be doing both of those things. I think that there is an opportunity. Unfortunately, this came up tonight. I think there's an opportunity to have, so, have somebody else come in and give the city some advice on this situation, evaluate the advice in this situation. But for right now, with the accountability situation as it is, uh, and, and have you all not been presented with this letter from TCRS about the retirement benefits? I don't think we should make a decision on any of this tonight. Uh, Alderman Brown. Uh, those folks down there were in before I was. Uh, I just went to, uh, Alderman Woodcock. Thank you. Um, that was a lot of information. Seems like it was two separate issues, but uh, I'll try to phrase my questions in a simple manner to get hopefully simple answers. Um, John, uh, in 2001, in two, from 1987 to 2000, you were a 1099 contractor. That's correct. May I speak, Mayor? I, I mean, just Thank I, you. I think, yes, you, should, I think you should declare some sort of conflict of interest, John. Did that? <laughs> I'm answering questions about my employment status, Mayor. You're not answering questions as a city attorney? 
That was not Take that. it either way. He's yeah. asking me a question. I got you. I think you should declare some sort of conflict. I think you, you declare whatever you want to, Mayor. What an alderman would call as, as an individual employee or contractor, th those years you were 1099. From, from February 10th, 1987 until July 1st, 2001, I was a 1099 independent contractor, <laughs> received my, what, my compensation without taxes withheld or anything else. In 2001, in the budget ordinance, which I gave you and Mr. Waters a copy of, Mayor Fuquay changed my status, and not just my status, Curtis Lincoln was the city judge. We're both in the same boat on all of these issues. Everything the mayor's talked about, the city judge is the same status I am. He's, bu he's budgeted for 40 something thousand dollars, so he's budgeted for less time, but he has no more issue of accountability than me. But yes, since 2001, we've been employees by ordinance by this city. To answer your question. So you stopped receiving a 1099? Yes, we began getting W-2s and had our, our federal tax withheld. And, and one, one thing just to straighten out the record about this confusion with TCRS, the city of Hendersonville unfortunately failed to report to the Tennessee Department of Labor any wages for part-time for, for employees for a period of two years. This issue with TCRS, when they sent that letter, that problem was discovered and we had to go back and file those returns so that Curtis Lincoln and I and all part-time employers employees for the city were reported to what's called 10 paws which is the Tennessee yeah. Department of Labor and that was the part that was the reason that they came up with this erroneous assumption that we must not be employees because of a mistake that our finance department made it was it was un, it was unintended but we have been reported Mr. Lincoln and I have been reported to TCRS every month since July of 2001 as employees, as established by ordinance. Now the other issues we're talking Can about, about the, uh, let me finish. Yeah. Okay. The other issue we're talking about, about, uh, about compensation and accountability, I'll be happy to address that too. I, I've got an answer for, the, for those issues and I'll tell you what I told the mayor, which is a little different from what he told you. Imagine that. So I, I, I want to answer, help answer that also. As I've talked with TCRS, they have never mentioned that they've changed the employment status with the Department of Labor. Um, also, in talking with them, you could still receive a W-2 and be filing as an independent contractor. I have no idea how that would work, Mr. Woodcock. You're a financial advisor, Mr. Bolt, too. That would be an unusual situation. But that would be that would be, help us if we had an, another attorney here to answer that. I'm not. I'm not done before go, people go get Alder crazy. Woodcock, go ahead. Um, and. and Maybe we're the only two that have a copy of this, but Section 5 says effective June 27, 2001, the city judge and city attorney for city shall be treated as employees of the city for the purposes of federal tax withholding and participation in the TCRS program. Um, just so everyone knows what it says. Um, Mayor, you said that, I mean, I'm not going to go there. So it seems to me that the attorney you're wanting to hire is representing the two employees, not the city, fixing this, correct? The attorney that, that Alderman uh, Bolt wants to hire. What, no. yeah, whomever. Okay. Which are when you mentioned, they're representing you and, the, and, and Lincoln. They would be representing the city's fringe benefit package as was in that ordinance. But of course it would be the city judge and city attorney that would benefit from that. That's not the contract that the mayor signed back in December before all this brouhaha. Yeah, that's a different yeah contract. sorry for that confusion. That's a I was talking about contract. the one yeah, you guys And I, and I wish about. that would have been brought up to me when we had the meeting not too long ago. Okay, so if... And, and honestly, I might have possibly said yes because it would, it, would, it, would, it, would, it would clear up the confusion. So you may not want to answer this or you may not mm -hmm. legally be able to answer this. So if, if we hired this attorney that you mentioned and it comes back not favorable for you or Lincoln, the city uh, judge, what, what's the next step? Would it, then the city be liable to fund your retirement based on what the TCRS program would have? If ultimately, if I may answer that, if ultimately the city did not prevail on this issue, which I think is highly unlikely, but if that happened, the city would be entitled to a refund from TCRS of approximately $250,000 <laughs> that the city has contributed since 2001. The city would be getting that money back. For the two employees. For the two employees. That's correct. That's, that's the only way I know they could fix it if, if, if ultimately the city was unsuccessful. Like I say, they, there are other people that are in the same situation that the city judge and I are in that are currently drawing TCRS. So it's, I think it's unlikely that we would not prevail in this matter. 
but it's still I think it's important too that we have representation moving forward that's which you know I guess that's lobbying but I mean I think it's just important for both of us as we get closer to retirement age do you want me to and if, if, I, if, I, if, 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 if the board wants me to address this issue well, why don't we go ahead with Alderman Woodcock okay Alderman Woodcock <laughs> I was just gonna say in closing if, if, if it was my decision since it's a personnel issue you know have general look at it and then bring something to the board in that fashion um, it's, it's, it, it's kind of time sensitive. Hold, hold on Alderman Woodcock as an employee and the person listed in the ordinance what was the time frame you were expecting we've put the meeting off with TCRS two or three times because representative William Lambert wants to go and he's asked that now maybe it be the first part of May to have the meeting. It could be later in April. I'm still waiting to hear from him. He's looking for dates, hopefully in April. Obviously, I want it decided earlier rather than later. So I know where I stand with this and where Cur Curtis Lincoln stands with this. It's important to his family and my family. Um, you know, part of the reason we work for a third of our billable hour rate, basically, is because of the promise of these fringe benefits. And that's something we've worked you, for for 17 years. So are you having this issue with the other cities you represent? I'm not an employee of any of the other cities. So, so you, this is the only agreement you have of the three like that? This is the only one that's, you can only be under TCRS with one city. Okay. And, and this is the only one that I have anything like this with. Judge Lincoln doesn't have it with any other city either. He, he, this is something that the city of Hendersonville did primarily because of Mary Fuquay. Because he had been the city attorney for Mount Juliet, a part-time city attorney. And just to tell the whole story, there was a, a law passed in the legislature that benefited him, and he went under their Mount Juliet's retirement plan, just like he did for, had me and <coughs> Judge Lincoln and I do here in 2001. It was passed in 1992 by the Tennessee General Assembly. And because Judge, because Mayor Fuquay was familiar with that, he said to me and to Judge Lincoln, this is something the city should do for you. They did it for me in Mount Juliet. This will be good for you. You need to look ahead to the future. The Board of Mayor and Alderman voted 11 to 2 to approve that. The two votes against it were Jack Smith and Scott Sprouse. How about that? And the Board has put the money for this contribution to TCRS in the budget every year since then. That's a different uh, issue from the accountability. That's, but that, this is yeah. the issue about the TCRS issue. I'm not going to say I support it uh, or oppose it, but... If that's the case, maybe the general committee could have a special call meeting before our next meeting. That way it goes on our next agenda on the 23rd. I mean, or, otherwise, are you expecting action tonight? So you want to take action tonight on this? I think the only thing that... Well, I Alderman Bolt. The, what I, all I brought up was, since this is an issue, mm -hmm. I mean, shoot. That's fine. Um, this has been going on. He's been an employee since 2001. Mm -hmm. It's been exactly the same way from day one. There's never been a change. Uh, Bradley works for the board. He doesn't work for Jamie Clary, the mayor. So this is the way it's always, 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 always been. So yes, right now there's they're concerned about TCRS. Shockingly, it's only happened here recently that now there's some question as to whether or not he'd receive retirement benefits. I'll also say, and and Mayor's uh, familiar with this because he was on my Tennessee soccer board when we had to set precedent over trying to remove a board member because of insubordination. So there's a precedent that's been set here, I think, from the standpoint of it's been the same way for 18, 18 plus years and the last two and a half years, two and two years and four months, it's been exactly the same way under the current mayor. So what you have here, I mean, I talked to some very intelligent, smart women this morning about some of the issues that, that we deal with as a board. And these are, these are one of, these are one of them. The mayor also knows that I know the attorney in question and he's a friend of mine. So I consulted with that said attorney. And what that said attorney told me was that the information that he received, not necessarily just relative to this, was a very narrow set of parameters 
that turns out not to be what he thought it was going to be. So expound on that, please. Well, if you want to go further with it, the reason why well, I brought well, up the well, excuse, no, 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 I, I no, 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 you ask well, questions. But we've got other people in the queue. No, no, well, well I don't care. I'm not, it, it might be better to have Mark come well, here. I mean, we're no, 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 no. I saw the floor just be official. Yeah, that's true. About that it. Yeah, and so my, my concern, my concern is here's my concern. Mm -hmm. Everything is so damn secret, so damn secret about how everything gets done relative to the mayor. So let's be all open, let's all be all transparent, and just let things happen. Let's talk to everybody. There's this, if this was really a problem and I was the mayor, which I'm not, I'd just say, you know what, I need to take this to the board because this is a concern of mine, and this is my concern. But in reality, what the concern is, you know, like John Bradley. So that's what ends up being the issue. So this is a way that I can attack John Bradley time after time after time, and then this is what happens. So Bradley, you know, he, he, he reports to us. He doesn't report to the, the mayor. I mean, I didn't make that up. That's just how, it, how it's set up. So if we're going to go all the way, then mayor last week, well, hold on. Let's stick on this. No, no, I'm, done. I'm not done. Is this on this on this item? Absolutely, the, the mayor, because it's we're talking about the same attorney, and you know what? All this, all of this, can be avoided. We don't have to do any of this stuff. Honestly, it's ridiculous. That's right. So last week, he calls the what the payroll specialist out of this office, out of this city hall, and he goes and asks him, her to meet with him over at Pinnacle Bank in a boardroom. Off campus. What's wrong with that? Well, it's, if it's if it's nothing wrong with it, then then why would you not meet in City Hall? And let me finish. I didn't ask you a question. And th the other thing is, uh, Ron didn't know about it. Ron found out about it, and so he ended up going to over to that meeting. And in discussion with your attorney, who I know really well, he's trying to figure. You were trying to figure. No, I'll, I'll rephrase that. The question was. How do I not have to pay John Bradley because he's not giving me enough information when that John Bradley is a W-2 employee and you and I both know by federal law you can't stop paying a W-2 employee. You can terminate a W-2 employee, but if he has money coming to him, then he has, or she's got money coming to him, they have money coming to him. In discussion with that attorney, it, it became very apparent from my perspective and apparently from his that you wanted accountability of those 15 minutes because you want to know who he was talking to and what he was talking, what you were talking about, who he was talking to and who he, what we were talking about. Well, that is a, a problem. That is a, a conflict relative to client attorney privilege. So if we're all just being open and honest here, there's a whole different way to solve this problem than where we are today. And, and this is created, this is created by the mayor. So this has been the same way for 18 years. There's never been a question. He's a W-2 employee. We have paperwork that says that. So if there really was an issue and there really was a concern, guess what? We'd all handle it just a little bit differently than what we're doing it right now. We've also I got think. paperwork that questions it. Alderman Woodcock. Thank you. Um, I agree with some of what was just said. I don't think the mayor has the ability to tell TCRS who's eligible or not. But um, the um, here, here, here's my issue. I mean, you have obviously a lot of evidence that supports what you say. I'm not comfortable ever taking action when I'm handed something and then said, we well, got to vote on it 20 minutes later. Um, so, I mean, that, that's my only thing. That's why I was saying, you know, we could streamline it and get it officially on the agenda so everyone knows what's happened. That there's nothing secret about it uh, in two weeks. Uh, that, that'll be my last comment. If this board wants to take action tonight, I'm not going to stop it. But um, that's just my uh, consistency uh, for the last six years. Thank you. Alderman Woodcock, thank you. Alderman Skidmore. I'm awake. Dear, uh, Jonathan, press your button again, please. I'm, I'm sure I'm on because I've good. got the red lights. You're good. This is the most, the biggest bunch of nothing that I've heard this evening. Amen. Um, you know, John neglected to say, I've been on this board, what, since 87? So? 
and I was one of the ones that voted for it. Scott voted against it, and I voted for it in 2001, and I remember this because there was a very substantial debate on this issue with Mayor, with Mayor Fuquay carrying the banner. Well, I make no bones about it. I supported Mayor Fuquay in this endeavor, and I felt that it was the proper thing to do because in the long run, it was two things that it did. One, I was thinking that it would save the, the, the taxpayers money in the future. John was doing a good job then. He's doing a good job now. All those years ago, nothing has changed in my, in my mind. And John and I, or excuse me, the, our city attorney, John Bradley, and I have been multiple times in so many political wars up here that I've probably got scars on my back that says John Bradley on it. But I, it's never wavered that, that, that he did the right thing for this whole city and this board, whomever was on here. I don't think there was ever any kind of malice. So when he, when it came to the board at that time, I supported it. I thought it was a good idea because I thought it would save the taxpayers money and it also would, it would show morale at that time in our city because you got to understand, in those times, it was rough. I mean, you think rough tonight? It was rough back then. Trust me when I tell you that. It was rough being an alderman and a mayor. Where are my questions in life? And, and so let me put the shoe on the other foot for a minute with the mayor's office. I don't mind the mayor of, of the city of Hendersonville questioning what he thinks or she thinks is wrong with something going on in the city. They have that right as far as I'm concerned. Where I, I draw the line where I'm concerned about this, well, there's several, several things I'm concerned about. But one, I have to question why didn't he not come, why our mayor, and I'm not getting on him because, like I said, he has the right in this particular circumstance. I believe in all the years I've been up here. He's got the right to think what he wants. He was elected by the people of Andersonville. But why didn't he come to his board? Now, he might have some up here that he disagrees, that this is just me, that, 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 that the mayor, because it happens every four years, that there might be some that he disagrees with up here. But, man, there are people up here that, that support the city of Hendersonville. It's not about me, for example. It's not about personalities. I can st walk off this board and Mayor Clary and I have and go to his office and have a cup of coffee if that we want. But if he would have told, instead of going to some outside resources that doesn't know anything about our city, that disappoints me. Because we're the decision makers, not this Nolan fella from, was it, where was he from? Clarksville? He's from Springfield. Springfield? Clarksville. Okay, well, that's even worse. It's Clarksville. <laughs> it's Clarksville. I talked to him at great length yesterday, if I get a chance to speak. Do you, do you want me to answer well, the question? Well, no, wait a minute. I'm not through because I think, I, I think everybody on this board has earned the right to speak what they want to speak at. I'm disappointed that. And I'm, I'll tell you another thing I'm disappointed because we've been down, I've been down this road with another mayor many years ago. I'm not going to say his name. But he's done some of the same things. And I, I disagreed with him back then. And I'm disagreeing with what we did, what has come about tonight especially entering into a legal binding contract, even though he has professional services, with not at least letting one alderman know what he's doing. And, and, and if not that, he can't do it because it's, a, it's, it's in direct violation with the city attorney. He's not going to tell him that. Uh, but with another lawyer that, that represents, that I guess he's representing the city, and if he is, He's dead wrong because he hadn't talked to any of us up here. If that uh, lawyer from Springfield has, is up here and he signed a con if he signed a contract, I don't know if, and I don't know if the mayor's got to sign a, 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 a copy of the contract. But if there's any anything in there that says that he signed a contract on the city of Hendersonville, that is wrong. This is the city attorney saying it's okay. Well, What's the email from him. I don't care. Well, well, wait just a second. It says, okay, it says here that I am pleased that the city of Hendersonville has decided to engage me. I'm sorry, I'm getting old. I apologize. That has engaged me uh, at Batson Nolan 
to serve as a, as a consultant to the city of Andersonville? No. And then this is the city attorney saying that's okay? Well, I'm going to tell you something. If he did say it, I still disagree with him, and that just gives me more power to say what I'm saying because that's wrong because he should have call, come to the Board of Mayor and Alderman. Mm -hmm. Every contract that we negotiate, it goes to a committee of aldermen, and we either it approve it or we change things in it, and then we bring it to the board, or sometimes the contracts, we just say, Mayor, we've looked at it as a, as a committee, as aldermen, and we approve it and go on. So there's two kind of contracts that happen within the city of Andersonville. That's what goes on here. <coughs> But under no circumstance should a contract be given without the Board of Aldermen knowing it. Mm -hmm. And I've, and I, you know, we, we went down this issue earlier, uh, about a year ago, on another contract the city was done with. My position was the same then. It was wrong to go and go forward with a contract without the city knowing it. At least uh, a committee. That would be like, well, I don't want to go there, but I think you all on this board and in the audience tonight and on TV, you get the, my drift. Um, anytime there's a contract, and th that's where it troubles me because we're, we keep going down a road that we shouldn't be as a city and we shouldn't be as a board of mayor and aldermen. We shouldn't, be, we shouldn't even be doing it. I mean, I, you know, J Mayor Clary said that he was sorry on the first contract and he would never do it again. Here we are again. You know, I sit up here a lot of times, and I, and I have been, people have called me and said, why aren't you as vocal as you used to be? Well, old age does a lot to do with that, has a lot to do with it. And, and also, there's times that it's not worth the fight to getting into. And that's the key here, is the fight, the argument about it. Because sometimes it's just, you know, you can go behind... You can wait till the meeting's over and go and say, hey, Mayor, if I offended you, I'm sorry. Because I've done that to Mayor Clary. I did it right there in that office, and I meant every word I said about it. Because he jumped me about it, and I, I deserved it. And I told him I was sorry. I'd never do it again. And I hadn't in a long time. But I, I uh, you know, I try to be polite as I can up here. But when you start dealing with contracts and things like this, this will you're going down a road, my Lord, you're going down a road that you don't want to go by yourself. You've got to have your you've got to have your board behind you when you go into when you're dealing with contracts that's dealing with taxpayers' money, because it's 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 my money too as a taxpayer, but it's y'all's too. And wouldn't you want to know if he's taking your money and dealing with what he's dealing with? I have an issue with that. I really do as an alderman, and I probably would be as a taxpayer. More than likely, I would probably be at the next two weeks, I'd be at the podium saying, what are you doing? You're dealing with my money. You know, this board is probably one of the most, uh, as far as accountability goes and transparency, I'm talking about the mayor and the whole board. It's probably the best I've ever seen in 30-some-odd years. I've never seen one better. And I think everybody wants to be accountable. But sometimes being accountable, you can go a little bit over the line with it. Um, as far as him not, as, as the city attorney not, say, uh, not saying, uh, writing down, like I spent 15 minutes this and 30 minutes this, let me tell you something. I know I worked in a law office for many, many years, and I know how hard it is, and I know Russ Edwards can tell you the same thing. It's hard to, write, to sit down there at your desk because I've done it. And you write down each single time what you do and what you do and what you do when you're on a, when you're trying to account for your money. I don't want if I call John Bradley, I'll tell you right now. I don't want him run into the mayor's office and said at 3:05 to 3:30, I spoke to Mark Skidmore. I don't want him telling this, the city attorney what I was talking about. It's none of his business. Not one time is it his business what I spoke. To John Bradley about and I will discuss this and argue to my dying day would you like for me to come to y'all's if you're in a uh, an issue a lawsuit or something would you like me to come since uh, if there's someone from Ward 1 in here tonight would you like for me to come and, and say I want to know what your lawyer said I don't think you would because it's it's none of my business 
and it's none of his. So that really gets to me when I see that. And I think you all would appreciate that because there's something about a, an attorney-client privilege or an attorney talking to a city councilman. And I don't care how anybody else does it. He can parade, the mayor can, can, can parade a hundred city attorneys in here and say, you're wrong, Skidmore. I don't think I'm wrong. I think I'm right. I don't think, he'll do, I don't think he can find that, but he might. I don't know. I'm not worried about other cities. I'm not worried about Springfield or Gallatin or whomever he spoke to, Westmoreland. I'm worried about right here. I'm worried about the seat. I worry about the city. I worry about the things that apply here at this board because that's what every one of us on this board, including the mayor, is elected to do. And you all know that. I do too. So entering in this contract without us having any kind of knowledge again, in, in closing, bothers me. The city attorney, regardless of what the mayor says, and you all need to know this, and this board needs to know this, is a different, and I'm speaking of 30 years of experience, the city attorney in this city is a different animal. You can't, in Marshall's office, you can't compare that to the finance director. The city attorney is a different animal completely different and I think you all know that I think the mayor should know it I don't know why he doesn't if he did if he does I don't know where all this came from but in 2001 and this is the most critical thing I've ran it enough because I'm 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 mad but I'm you know I'm just like I've seen this before in 2001 and that's the critical thing here the question would be whether there was any violation of this city because if there was then it's all on us up here. That's where the problem would lie. But in 2001, we passed that ordinance. And you probably should have that, Mayor. If you don't, you need to go look for it. Um, dealing with the TCRS. And I firmly believe that if it goes to some kind of court or tribunal or however that does, how they do that in Nashville, I don't have a clue because I've never heard of this happening to the city of Hendersonville. But we'll win because we've got the evidence where we entered into that into that in system. Both the, not only just and we're only talking about tonight, John Bradley, but there's another fellow that's involved in this too, and that's our city judge. We've got to remember that. But there were two people <clears throat> back in 2001, and it was. The board thought that in their infinite wisdom at that time that that was the proper thing to do, and we did it. And I think it was, we all were the only two, weren't you, that voted against that? So that's a resounding yes as far as I'm concerned. Um, and then finally, I'm just real, and I know I've been harping on this enough, but that contract, and I'm going to close, that really bothers me, and I... I'm almost tempted that needs to really be looked at. I don't know what I don't know how much money has been spent. I hadn't even asked that question yet. I don't even know when it was signed. Uh, I guess I could go look. Probably going to have to now. And when this was signed, when was it? In December. Oh my God. Okay, that that is a long time to be into a contract without the board knowing. Um, I don't have any other, th other anything else to say except I'm disappointed. I'm sorry that, that we've had to discuss this night at tonight. It's what, almost 11? Maybe a little after. Um, I hope that we can resolve this and be on our way. But, oh, there was one other thing I think is critical, and I, think, I don't know if it was said or not, but can you do that with a W-2 and, and file... Um, under a different a, a different form or something like that for the IRS? I, I think that, I think it would be worth asking an attorney to answer for us. No. Okay, I didn't think you could. I've never, I was trying to think of when, before I sold my company, that I ever did anybody that way, but I never did. That's just not, um, I don't think you can do that at all. I, and I, I don't even, honestly, I don't, you can ask a lawyer, of course, I'm assuming you're going to, but I don't think that, that I don't think you can. And I don't think John Bradley did that. Um, I don't think anybody would have done it. I just, I've just never heard of that happening. But um, 
I don't know where we go tonight with this, whether it goes to committee. Um, but I, I think there's going to be some hurt feelings over this one way or the other. Uh, and I'm sorry for that. Um, so thank you, Mayor. Okay. I want to ask, answer your two questions that sure. you have for me. Please do, by one, You asked about um, why didn't this come earlier. We had a deadline of April 2nd. Um, I thought that that was something we were working through. It would have come to us pretty soon. Uh, but it's something I thought that we were working through, especially since we had a meeting just uh, just last Friday. Uh, but it was something that I was I was planning if we couldn't resolve it to bring to the board. So that's that's why it hadn't come to us yet. Yeah. And the other question was about approving contracts. You asked about previous contracts being approved. Uh, we uh, I sign in the um, and our city attorney approves a lot of contracts that never come to the board. And I'll give you an example. Um, our former uh, public works director hired GHP uh, Gobble Hayes Partners to sure. help design the fire hall. That right. was one of many contracts that were signed without the, that specific the contract so ever coming. Right. Without that specific contract ever coming to the board or even going to a committee until right. after it had been signed. So we do that an awful lot. And again, um, email here that says from our city attorney: In my opinion, you and your staff can hire consultants without the approval of committees or the board, with money appropriated in the budget ordinance for hiring such consultants. Such so consultants. That, so, that an so that answers, uh, I believe, your two questions. Alderman Strauss. Well, let, I was almost finished before you. Okay. There were only. I just noticed that it was December 14th. So you waited all the way till April, when you thought this was such a, a, a concern to you. I just would say that is. That's almost five. It's almost uh, uh, half a year, and then you come forward with this, and then also, and then I was going to close, and I'll be quiet mm -hmm. this evening. I hope, and I pray. Did you ever find that email? that you were looking for that you and Alderman Sprouse had an yes. issue with. Yes, okay. got it right behind us. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Alderman Sprouse. Thank you. Just to follow up quick, wasn't planning on this, but something that, that Mr. Skidmore said, and something you said, yes, the Public Works Director, who's also our, our Capital Projects Manager, signed an agreement to design a fire hall but everybody in city government and most people in town knew that we were building a new fire hall. It wasn't a surprise that someone would have to be engaged. That's just one example. Well, but that's a bad example. I've waited a long time to speak. So, Mayor, one of the things you do extremely well is you put a lot of time and a lot of effort into communicating what's going on in the community and what's going on in City Hall. I told a friend last year that if there was a Hendersonville mayor that had the engineering skills and soft skills of Mayor Foster and your communication and PR skills, that mayor would probably now be representing us in Congress right now, just between those two. So I applaud you for that. But the idea that something as simple as saying, I was concerned about a significant matter to the point that I wanted to go hire outside counsel but you don't discuss it with any member of this board and you don't discuss it with our council bothers me. I'm accountable to my wife. <coughs> and there are many things that we understand that we have to do and that we do in the course of business and relationships and things like that. But if she found me on an off-site clandestine meeting with another woman, the very fact that I didn't talk about it is what's going to get me in trouble not that that's what I was doing. We talk about how there's no other employee like the city judge and the city attorney. Exactly. We have a pay plan that has a job description for almost every employee in this city. Gives their job descriptions, what their requirements are, who they report to, who reports to them, what their pay grade is, if they're exempt or non-exempt. Guess what? The city attorney's job is not defined by our pay plan. Our city attorney's job is defined by our code. There is an entire section about city attorney. He is an, he is an officer of this city, just like I am, just like you are, just like our city recorder is. He does not report to any one individual. He reports to the entire board. And it is important that he have the ability to work with the entire board so that when we're asking advice on legality of measures that we're proposing, we have those conversations with him. 
it's important. I thank Mr. Bolt for what he said. I think that this is an issue of control because we find that when city employees have conversations with independent aldermen who are elected to represent the, their residents, their ward, their neighbors, we find that there can be conflict, that they all of a sudden job performance is not what it was just a few months prior and that there may be a negative job evaluation or a suspension or in this case I hope it's not I, it just seems to be too much of a coincidence that while one issue of billing is going on that now all of a sudden we have issues of of retirement and benefits being taken away and there have been members of this board who when they ask a question or act independently that amazingly there's something they're having to deal with whether it's a call from a reporter or something on Facebook and it's just it's just not right we hear that there were aldermen who had trouble with the billing and the accountability of the city attorney let those aldermen ask the question every one of us is a grown person Every one of us is considered enough of a capable person that our neighbors elected us to this board. If an alderman has a concern, let's have the discussion. Don't say an alderman came to you and said that there was a problem. We can speak for ourselves. Talking about consultant hours, you've, Mayor, you've worked as a consultant. I've worked as a consultant. And it's an amazing thing that you really, what you have to do is you have to balance that the person you're billing has to see the value in your work. Worked on a project for the university and we, the, uh, our direct contact, he loved it, thought it was great, ready to pay the bill. He goes to the president of the university, the president of the university says, they didn't do any work. And he goes, what do you mean? He said, well, if they did this much work, campus should have been torn up for two months. Well, we scheduled all the work ahead of time and did it during the Christmas break, came in under the cover of the night. So I had to come back and do a big binder to show all the permits and all the drawings and everything we did to demonstrate the work. With our department heads, we see the value in the work that they do. We first know the time that they spend because we see them and they're engaged. Secondly, we know more importantly, we see the work that they do. I know what Mr. Gilly does and accomplishes as a parks director because you see it in the parks. We see what we do, we see the value, I see the value. Mr. Bradley, a city attorney, doesn't sit and hold court, whereas everyone knows, but he has to do the job of an attorney. And part of the job of the attorney is telling us things we don't want to hear. I've lost, time, I've lost count of the number of times that I have asked him a question and I wanted to hear a yes and he told me no or I made a proposal and he said state law won't allow you to do that <clears throat> if he didn't do that he wouldn't be a good attorney I go to my doctor and my doctor tells me things I don't want to hear don't eat this increase your exercise do that sort of thing now I'm sure some people hear that and they go get another doctor. I don't. I try to listen to him. But we're in a situation now where yet again we only hear about something after we ask about it. And that's not right. That's not the way you handle relationships and that's not transparent. And. We heard maybe you go to the general committee. I'm going to tell you a couple of things about that. The person who brought this to the board is the vice chairman of the general committee. I'm the chairman of the general committee. I am very protective about committee committee authority and committee committee responsibility in the process, and that we be very deliberative in that process. I don't think there's anything that has been discussed tonight or there's anything left to be discussed in committee I would think that the other members of the committee I will not speak for them but since Mr. Bolt was one who brought it forward I would think he would agree if they disagree they can and the idea that a situation would be brought to us on one night we have advice of counsel and then we take action 
is not uncommon. Just think in the last year how many times we've called an executive session and had a conversation or had a briefing from attorney in the other room and we walk in and on the same night we say, we're going to pursue legal action. We're going to engage an attorney. We're going to do this. It's not, it's not out of the ordinary. I am troubled by this conversation because I know that there are going to be people who are going to look at the drama and assign blame <coughs> across the entire body, across all of city government. But when I go to the fire, when, when, when I've gone to emergency situations, I don't blame the firefighters for the fire. And I don't blame the police officers on the crime scene. It's messy. It's troublesome. But what you're seeing is, is the effect of continuing repression of information, heavily controlled situations with employees, under fear of retaliation, in the absence of information, misinformation, and we can't make this any better without a public conversation. And that's what you're seeing right now. This is not the problem. This is the symptom of the problem. And unfortunately, it's also part of the, it's part of the solution. It's going to public accountability. I think I voted against it, but I support the right of the city to defend its personnel policy. I could go all night about things that I did not vote for, but once this board made a decision, I am prepared to defend to the end. And if I don't agree with it, I'll try to change it. But I'm not going to let some other entity outside this city dictate it for us. I think we should vote tonight. I think it's important for any one of our city employees to know that once a promise is made to them, that any and every member of this board is to prepare to defend it and to honor it. Thank you. Alderman Sprouse, thank you. Alderman Edwards. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, maybe I, I, I didn't catch on to this. What is the status of the TCRS? Well, what is the conclusions of the TCRS right now? Here you go. Um, let's see. I, 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 is my, me, yeah, or I'm, either yeah, one. I'm, I'm, happy, I'm, happy, to read, I'm with, happy to read the letter to you. I'll go ahead and... Well, I mean, just... What, I mean, John, hold on. Hold on. Have they denied it or have they... They've, they've denied it and they've suggested um, they've suggested either an appeal, but they've also suggested some other another possibility. If you want me to make a copy of this, I will. Well, that, that's, I just did, okay. I didn't know. I wasn't clear, and so this may be directed to um, uh, Mr. Bradley. What, so, what is this? What's the appeal? What do you you just do an internal appeal to TCRS? If I'm allowed to speak, I would like yeah. to address well, that. I'm I've got several things question. I want to address, but I'll address that initially. The way it works is they make this internal determination. They send you a letter and they say, this is what we've decided. I sent them the letter that explained that the city had made a mistake on not reporting me to, to the Department of Labor, that I am a con that I'm, have been an employee since 2001. I sent them paperwork of that. I sent them a copy of the letter I received from TCRS in 2002 telling me that I qualified for this. And they, they informed me that I would have to file an appeal to the director. The director is Jamie Wayman. I filed an appeal to the director, and we've been trying to schedule a meeting with him for some time now, but because of Representative Lambert's busy schedule in the legislature, we've not been able to get that set yet. In the meantime, we have consulted and on the advice of the, the TCRS people said you probably ought to get a lawyer. We've consult, consulted with Bass, Barry, and Sims, and they said the city should be representing, you, you should be retaining us, not you. This is something the city promised you. And you know, and we nothing has been done about it, as as the mayor has explained to you, in no uncertain terms. He does not have a, a very good relationship with me, and that's unfortunate. He's the sixth mayor here I've worked for, and I've had a good relationship with all the prior mayors. I have tried to do everything this mayor has asked me for the last two and a half years, including itemized billing. I have discussed this with him. I have discussed it with him repeatedly. We've I've gone to the board of professional responsibility. Not only about the contract he signed with a lawyer behind my back, and whether that was ethical or not, but also about the billing I can provide to the mayor. Laura Chastain, the assistant director of the profession, Board of Professional Responsibility, which worked there for over 20 years, discussed this matter with me Wednesday of last week, the very same day that the mayor took Ron Minix and Alicia over to Pinnacle Bank for a meeting with some lawyer that I'd never heard of at that time. I explained my situation to her. 
She said, you cannot give detailed billing to the mayor. Only the board can waive the privilege. You represent the board, you don't represent the mayor. If the board wants to waive it, they got to vote to do it. And the conversation I had with the mayor and Peter Voss back in December and back in February 5th, I explained that to him. I said, you're not the client, the board is. He said, well, can't you just give the bill to the board? I said, the board could, but they'd have to vote to do it. They'd have to waive the privilege. The board has the privilege, not the mayor. The, the, whole, the whole thing, he asked me on January 2nd to give detailed itemized billing. Let me explain to you what's happened since then. Hold on one second. I, I'm, 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 well, I'm, Russ, I'm, Russ had a question, and I feel like you've answered that question. Russ, you've got the floor. No, um, Russ has the floor. Russ has the floor. Russ, do you want to go ahead and ask well, any other questions? Uh, I may get to that line of questioning in a minute. I'm, I may just, uh, well, my point is, do you, do you feel confident, uh, Mr. Bradley, that with, if you hired counsel and you presented everything to the, to the director that the TCRS director would overturn the initial decision of the findings of the TCRS? I would certainly hope so, but we haven't had the meeting, and the reason we wanted Representative Lambert there was in case there was some legislative solution that would be required. Senator Bob Rochelle, former Senator Rochelle, when I discussed this with him, he was the sponsor in the Senate of this bill. He said, you need to have somebody from the legislature go with you when you talk to TCRS because they will respect them and they will help them craft a bill to resolve this situation. He was shocked that I was in this situation, but he says sometimes these things come up with coverage issues with TCRS, but you want somebody in the legislature that if there has to be a bill passed, they can get it passed. He said, even if it's just limited to you and the city judge, if they don't want it to apply to anybody else in the state, you can do that. So that's the reason we've been trying to have Representative Lamberth go with us, and that's uh, my latest communication with him was two days ago. In the, um, and so if you hired the, the Bassberry and Sims, they would be representing the city. I mean, yes, they, they, would not, be, they would not the be representing The city's position me. would be that the employment benefits should yes. be given to you and Judge Lincoln. That was, that was the thing that Bassberry and Sims told me. They said, Henderson was already a client of ours. They said, why on earth would you be the client? They said, Hendersonville is our client already, and this is a benefit that the city has promised you, and, and a benefit the city has been paying TCRS for both of us since 2001. And the, the attorney there said it, it should be the city. So it, it, that, has, that has not been resolved yet. Uh, and obviously, if, if Curtis and I have to pay the attorneys ourselves, we will. But it seems fair that the city should bear this since it's a city benefit. Well, um, okay. and cause I, I, But you don't know... I don't know if you know yet what the Bassberry's retainer would be for something. I don't like have this. I don't have any idea. We could we could get that information. No. I'd be very happy if the if the board wanted to put a cap on what they would be willing to spend. We're hoping that this is just going to be the one meeting, and that it'll be over after that. And and I, I don't want to speak for Bassberry and Sims, but they they have already reviewed this matter, and they feel, you know, I mean, we we feel like we're in a, a good position, but Abraham Lincoln once said. A lawyer who represents himself mm. has a fool for a mm -hmm. client and a lawyer. So Done I've that. taken that to heart, and I have not attempted to represent <laughs> myself in this, and neither has Judge Lincoln. It just seems appropriate that rather than representing ourselves, that we should have somebody that specializes in this sort of a matter to represent us. And, and before the night's over, folks, at some point, I want to respond to all this about the itemized billing because I've sort of responded to it, but a lot of the things that were said were not accurate, and I want to set the record straight. It's not been a willful refusal. I'll go ahead while, I'm, while I've got the floor. Well, let me, let oh, me, no, um, Alderman Edwards has the floor. Um, <laughs> well, I just have this, and then because I have to keep it neat in my mind, and then I may move to that. I don't have any problem with going forward with it tonight because frankly at this point I'm, I'm already sick of talking about it because we if, if we could go through committee and come back and we're still going to continue talking about it I don't see a problem with myself hiring uh, Bassberry and Sims I would ask that there be uh, a cap on what we pay the attorney in and uh, maybe ten thousand dollars and if, if it's more come back to, I don't think it would get to that point but and if it's more come back um, and with the caveat that Bass Berry would be representing the city yes. in that That's in that position, I, I guess that would be in in, the, in a formal motion. I don't know if it's amending Alderman Bolt's motion, but Alderman Bolt, you want to change your motion to put that cap of ten thousand dollars on there? Yes, I'd be willing to do that. Who made the second? Alderman Sprouse did. Sprouse. Alderman Edwards, go ahead. Okay, um, I think that's all on that issue. Now that it's, I don't know if it's on the floor, but it's it's certainly come up. I might as well ask about it. The the issues come up with the billing. 
Um, you know, I, 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 I know it is difficult to submit a lot of uh, bills, and I would rather have the city attorney spending time, uh, you know, doing stuff for the city as opposed to trying to um, keep track of all his time. What, um, I mean, would it be any easier just to uh, give the city attorney a flat amount? I don't know how often uh, the city attorney gets paid, but instead of having to submit all the billing, I don't know if that would be easier as opposed to trying to come up with all the billing um, because I think the, um, I mean, if, if, if the Gallatin city attorney, I mean, Mr. Bradley, do you know what, what is the Gallatin city attorney's salary? They they get about 140000 a year, it's right? It's quite a bit more than the Hendersonville city attorney. So, and, and that's just also full-time, though. Right, that's a full-time, and so yep. if, if we had a full-time attorney, we would be paying probably one hundred and fifty, hundred sixty thousand dollars a year. Right? Yeah. Let, me, let me address that, because I think that's important. When this issue first came up, I consulted with several attorneys and a couple of, well, at least one judge about this whole issue, about the billing and the itemized billing. And one of the attorneys said, you know, the mayor shouldn't do that without the consent of the board because of the extra money it's going to cost the city. Because I explained to him, and this, as I explained to the mayor when he was elected over two years ago, I had a discussion with him about this very issue about billing. I said, Mayor, I am budgeted for approximately 19 hours a week, and that's fine. I said, there's never a time when I don't work more than 19 hours a week, but I, you know, if, I'm, if I work, I, I, I keep up with my time, but I don't charge for all of it. And that's the way it's been in the two years he was mayor before this change that came about in January. It's interesting about the change because the change, the contract that he hired with Mark, signed with Mark Nolan was December 14th. And it had all this in it about itemized billing and all this sort of stuff. And just three weeks later, I get this email from him about itemized billing. I told him, I said, it's going to cost the city more money. I said, I can do it. And I, I said, but it's the issue of privilege. I can't give you details. I said, I can give you generic. I can put like conference with staff, conference with, with, uh, with department heads or something like that. And, and, but I can't give you the details of who I've talked to and what I've talked about. But since he asked me to do that, Mr. Edwards, starting back on January the 2nd, Every day, every day, I've kept up with every minute I spent for the city of Hendersonville, hour after hour. And I, I told the mayor, I said, you know, I can give you a condensed version of this if, if that's what you want. But he wanted the details. He said, I want itemized detail billing to the quarter hour. What has happened since then? I'm budgeted for 19 hours a week. What's happened since then, since I've kept such track of it, I've been charging the city for more like 30 hours a week because I've been keeping up with it. In the past, I would work the same amount of time, but I didn't charge for it because that was my choice to not keep, you know, not have to account for every minute I spend, but to keep it within the budget. I think in the 15 or the, I think in the 17 years that I've been an employee of the city, I think I exceeded my budget one time. I'm not sure about that. You'd have to add, ask Ron about it. And I think Ms. Cunningham was maybe on the finance committee at the time, and there was an overage of a few thousand dollars. And I've tried to keep it within that budgeted amount. But when the mayor demands me to keep up with every minute I spend, it, it's been more time because I've spent more time. I don't think anybody on this board that knows me thinks I spend less than 19 hours a week working on city time. I know my wife certainly knows I spend far more than that. There's hardly a day of the week, including weekends, that I don't get a car, call from some alderman or some department head about something. And this was a part of the... The, the calculation that in 2001 led to the city judge and me getting this benefit because we weren't being paid our normal hourly rate or anything close to it. This was a benefit that made most, both of us want to move forward in that position even at a relatively low hourly rate of pay. And I, I, you know, I, I, Mr. Nolan, I met with him for over an hour yesterday. And Mr. Nolan assured me that maybe he had some bad information, but he assured me that if I'm an employee, the mayor cannot refuse to pay me, which is what Mr. Minix thought his marching orders were before yesterday, I believe. And Mr. Nolan, I had a good conversation with him. I told him I was disappointed that he went to the mayor without, you know, coming and speaking to the city attorney first because of some rules that are involved there. But I told him that I was, you know, I, that was, it was just, it was okay. And we, we were going to move forward from that. And I had a very good discussion with him. And, um, you know, I explained to him my conversations with the board of professional responsibility about this billing. The bottom line is this. If this board wants this kind of detailed, itemized billing, you can vote by seven votes to waive the privilege, 
and I will give you details of every minute I spend. And it'll also become a public record. And, you know, that's, you know, there have been all these records requests made about me over the last year. I mean, I, I've got um, so many things I've had to, to tolerate and put up with. For example, our mayor, according to his good friend John Perona, hired, got, got, got Candy Webb to make records requests for me or something along that line. He said, he said she's glad she's his bulldog or something. And then the same John Perona, Post on the mayor's web page, mayor's on, Facebook we're, we're page. Not we're, gonna get in John, we're not going to get in John Prona and people that have no opportunity that are not here. Well, we're not going to do these that. Are things that. These are derogatory things about me that have been on the mayor's web page, the mayor's Facebook page that I don't get a chance to respond well, to. And I'm just saying it's been an awful to have to deal with on. it. Alderman Edwards. Um, oh, okay, well, I mean, I'm fine. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied with what, based on what I've seen, the amount you're being paid i don't see why we couldn't give you a flat amount you said you're out what is your average about 19 or 20 hours yeah. a week yes sir. and you get one 125 dollars an hour this uh, no it's 100 it's 112 75 or something like that what are, what are the orders it's supposed to be 113 dollars supposed to be around the nearest dollar my suggestion as a way to avoid this problem and continue the way we've done it for the last 16 or 17 years is take the budgeted amount divide it by 24 for the city judge and the city attorney, we've both been in the position long enough. Everybody knows roughly the amount of time we spend on it. As long as neither one of us complains about time we're not billing for, I think the city is going to be getting a bargain. And just divide it and, and, and stop this about charging all this extra money. There's just no reason for it. I, don't, I mean, I'm happy with being paid for 19 hours a week. That's what my that's what the budget order call, budget ordinance calls for and that worked fine for this mayor for the first two years until he signed this contract with this lawyer in Clarksville well and it's uh, you know, all it all is all what it is well I mean I, I, what I'm saying is I'm you know instead of you having to bill I'm fine with you know you getting a flat amount I don't know if that's something we want to take up tonight um, but that may prevent and I wouldn't certainly want um, us to have to if you had to bill and say I spoke with Alderman Edwards about this and then everybody know about it, and I would think that I that I that. could speak with you in private and not have that broadcast on on Channel Three. That's correct. So um, I don't know if that needs to come up tonight or if we can bring that up take another. Yeah, take it to general maybe. Um, okay, and I'm going to close. I wish we could all stick to the issues because that's really the only motion on the table is to hire a um, hire whether or not to hire Bassberry and Sims and. And I guess issues about the attorney's billing. So I hope yeah. we can stick to that issue. I did not intend to address night. anything about billing until the mayor brought it up. I, th th I thought the issue was just going to be about the retirement, but we got off in a different direction. Oh. And I've got to, I've got to be able to at least respond and defend myself. Alderman Thank Edwards, you, Mr. Edwards. Edwards. I, I don't have anything else. Alderman Brown. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm not going to be very long, but I, I think that uh, we're talking about two issues. We're talking about retirement benefits the city attorney and the city judge has paid in since 19 or 2001 um, and what to do about that because TCRS has said that they feel that's not right now uh, and I do agree that we we are the city that said we will do that so we have to defend what we said we will do um, So I don't want to talk about accountability right now. That, that, that's another issue. I, I, I will no, I will say that uh, that the years that I have set up here, I have not had a problem with the accountability from the attorney that works for me or when I discuss stuff with him whenever I need to discuss him. Uh, he sometimes doesn't answer the phone, but he'll call back immediately. So uh, I feel like I've been serviced well as one of his employers. But uh, on the retirement issue, I, I think we're, we're, we're pole vaulting, trying to pole vault over something that's really pretty small. Uh, I agree with the $10,000 cap. I think that's good. Uh, I agree with attorney representation representing the city in front of them. Uh, I think uh, getting represented Lambert there is uh, a pretty vital point. I think that, that uh, helps us quite a bit. And I also agree and, and think that your salary is set by budget. Whatever we pay you per hour, we throw it in the budget. And I think the mayor said it was 112 grand right now. So uh, I would also say that we just divide that by 24. What Alderman Edwards said, pay it. Uh, 
I don't know exactly. I think we do the same with Curtis as well. We do the exact same thing with him. And we continue on with what this board decided to do in 2001. So what we're needing to vote on tonight, and I'm ready to vote on it, is do we contract Best Bear and Sims for $10,000 to go defend what we made a decision on in 2001? Uh, the other thing I would say, too, that uh, I wrote the note down here that, uh, Mayor, you were concerned about IRS liability and Department of Labor, and I'm, I'm appreciate that, and I'm glad you are. But if we've been paying uh, these two gentlemen with W-2 forms since 2001, if there's a problem with the Department of Labor or IRS liability, it's with the city. It's not with those the, the, the two gentlemen we're talking about as long as they've been paying their taxes. And if they haven't been paying their, they haven't been paying what they're supposed to, then that, that's their problem with IRS, not ours. So that's all I've got to say. Appreciate that. Alderman Petroli. Thank you, Alderman Brown. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so I just have uh, three questions. Um, and it, the hour is late. We're, we're uh, crunching in on midnight here. Um, when you were giving your opening statements about this, Mayor Clary, I might have missed it, and I've read this letter, but how did you find Attorney Nolan? Um, I had asked uh, a, a couple folks uh, about this situation, specifically about liability and do we have liability, because I, I'm like Alderman Brown, as I didn't think the city had liability, but I couldn't go based on what my knowledge of tax law was. Um, and so I talked to some folks in the comptroller's office, talked to... TML, talked to MTAS, and finally one of them suggested that I hire somebody outside to evaluate this situation and help me. Um, I want to say it was the Comptroller's office that, that suggested Mark Nolan based on his experience in, uh, in municipal law. Uh, I think that was the case. And what did MTAS recommend? Um, gosh, it attacks my memory here. Um, I, do, I don't remember what they recommended, but they did, uh, they did suggest that we um, that we get more accountability on the hours and the money that was going out. That was their concern that we didn't have, we didn't have much documentation on the money that was going out. Um, but as they always do, they they cautioned me that they're giving general advice and that we would need to talk to an attorney to give something more specific. Okay. Well, just to be clear, this is the first time I've seen this contract. Uh, when this, when you came back and gave your opening talking points, I actually texted. Uh, Gary Jekyll, who's with MTAS, and I said, did you recommend Mark Nolan to Jamie Clary? I don't think it was, Gary. And he said, no, I did not, did yeah. not even know he existed. I mm -hmm. said, did anyone from MTAS give Mark Nolan to the mayor? And he said, not to my knowledge, but he said somebody could have, but he said, typically, MTAS consultants would not recommend another attorney when there is already a city attorney in place. Yeah, typically, yeah, I agree. And that was sort of the conversation we had is that, but when it deals with your city attorney, they're not going to recommend that I go to the city attorney for questions about the city attorney. So typically, okay, I think but you're dead you, on. you just stated that MTAS helped you in this process yeah. of, of finding this attorney. Is that correct? No, I think I said the comptroller's office did. And in your text in my memory here, like I just said, is that I'd probably have to go back and look at some notes if okay, I didn't have that's those. That's fine. But I'm pretty sure, I think it was the comptroller's office, but I know I did talk to MTAS about that. I'll just situation. put my little animal cruelty private investigator skills back to work, and I will come up with the information myself like I do everything else. My next question is, and I would, I would appreciate the honor system from all the aldermen here. Which alderman here at this uh, meeting knew that the mayor had hired an attorney, outside, had hired this attorney, Mark, what's his name? Mark Nolan, or was aware that the mayor was fishing around for an outside attorney. Anybody want to answer that question? I would appreciate the honor system. Okay, I'm going to rephrase the question. Um, which alderman up here knew directly from the mayor that he was looking for an outside attorney before signing this contract on December 14th? Who knew that? Because I'll, I'll dig it up and you know I will. No one? Okay. Um, so in this letter right here, it says, I'm pleased that the city of Hendersonville has decided to engage me and Batson Nolan PLC firm to serve as a consultant to the city of Hendersonville. That's pretty important. 
but I, I'm going to read this line here, which to me is is um, concerning. It's it's very broad based. It says for purposes of addressing issues that come before this governing body. Now, besides for the grammatical errors in that sentence, this basically states every agenda item, anything that comes before this governing body is going to this attorney. So I want a list of everything that you have discussed with the attorney. It's just this. Just this. Hmm? Are you sure? How, how would we know that? I mean, we talked about, you know, we talked about you know what our what our policies and procedures and what our charter is and what our laws are for personnel. Well, that, well, for okay, vendors, well, that's a lot so more than just. Well, it's all in relation to this situation. The charter is in relation to every aspect of city business, Mayor. Okay, so I guess he and I talked about every aspect of city business. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of of what you discussed with this attorney, besides for Mr. Bradley. So you're, you said you also discussed policy and protocol. Do you mean under HR? What do you mean? I, I mean in this situation, he had to understand what our rules were and what, what the charter governs us and what our laws are and what our um, expectations are of employees. And so I provide, and specific to this situation. Okay, and so what did you give him? Oh gosh, I don't remember. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Okay. Uh, Alderman Hayes. Thank you, Mayor. I'm glad the hockey team got to leave earlier. <laughs> I am truly concerned about the morale of our city hall and all of our workers, from the directors down and from the directors up. So I'm just... I'm just sick about this, and I'm sorry, and I hate it, and, but I'm really concerned about the morale of our workers. I'm afraid a lot of them are leaving or have left or are considering leaving, and, and it's, it's just disconcerting, and I'm, I'm really concerned about it. John Bradley, he is a man of good character. I know him longer and probably better than any other employee at the City Hall. He is trustworthy. He is loyal. You can call him, and if he doesn't answer the phone, he will call you back. And then when you call him, no matter what you ask, if it's anything about this city, he knows. I don't know how he is. He's like an encyclopedia for Hendersonville. And he loves this city. And he loves this city hall. And he has had the back of every single one of us up here. I've heard him take... Uh, uh, to protect and have the back of every single one of us up here, including the mayor. I, he, he is a great man. Most of you probably don't know this, but he teaches. He's the pastor over at one of the retirement homes here in town. And on Sunday, if he's out of the state, he will fly in to lead that group of retired folks here in Hendersonville. And they love him. And he won't miss it. So I just want to speak to his character Whatever we need to do to defend uh, uh, his retirement, I, I say we do it. If it takes more than $10,000, please let me know. I appreciate you very much, Attorney Bradley. And I thank you for your service to the city. And I hope we can do better. Alderman thank Hayes, you. thank you. Alderman Cunningham. Thank you, Mayor. Well, if anybody knows the history of John Bradley and I, even though when I didn't deserve it sometimes, he was always respectful to me. And um, sometimes I didn't deserve it. But most of the time I did. <laughs> um, I have some questions. Real quick, I promise. Question number one, TCRS. We've been paying them re, uh, for retirement for the city attorney and the city judge for 17 plus years. What, and I'm going to be devil's advocate, what if we fail in our attempt with them 
What happens to all the money that we paid them? We would have a credit with them uh, that would be that would go toward our overall payments um, for all of our uh, all of our retirement, all of our people who would retire. How much is it? I've asked that question. I've asked that question. Waiting to hear back. Well, why couldn't we, in good faith, being that we are bound by an ordinance that everyone signed or passed back in 2001, take that money and put it in a self-funded retirement account for our city attorney and our city judge, because that's what we, this board, back in 2001 voted to do. Why, why wouldn't, and because that's annuitized. I mean, the money that we paid them from 2001 to, to now, they annuitize all that. So if we paid in, say, for instance, $200,000 for these two employees, that $200,000 has well become three to 400000 by now. So that's num number one. Because that's the right thing to do, in my opinion, if, if worse comes to worse, okay? Number two. I just want to clarify what we're doing tonight to have the uh, Bassbury and Sims represent the city of Hendersonville. Again, because it's the right thing to do, because this body had voted to do it back in 2001. So we're, we're, they're going to be defending our law. I mean, it's a law for the city of Hendersonville. Would it be both for the city attorney and the city judge? That was my question number two. Alderman Bolt, you want to hit that one? I'm sorry. I wasn't, what did you say? <laughs> did, you, did you take a nap? Yeah. <laughs> it's not hard not to do, man. So. I'm sorry. Go ahead. It was more fun when I was running the meeting. Uh, <laughs> what was your question? Okay. Question number two. The tenth ad, the the uh, fu the funds that yep. we're going to be paying, ba engaging Bass Varian Sims as a retainer or whatever it's called, right. up to ten thousand. Will that be in defense of both the city attorney and the judge? Well, I think that's what, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Russ indicated, and I accepted that. So, okay, I just yes. wanted to clarify yes. that. Yes, I'm fine and with that. I said I was going to be brief, and I'm brief. That those are my two. Concerns. All in Cunningham, thank so you. I'd like oh, answers to this TCRS. All the money that we paid them, and they've invested that money because it's a pension. That's what they do. <coughs> uh, I'd like to know the present value of it, and uh, and how we're going to get that money back if if worse comes to worse. I'll follow up. I think that's very reasonable because that's our answer, money. And also, that question. Do you know the answer to that question, John? They said that uh, the, the city, of course, would could get a refund of it. At one point, they said they would refund it, and I said, "I, I don't not want a want credit. I want a refund." Yeah, they at one, they said they could either give a credit or a refund when I discussed it with mm -hmm. them. But of course, I did not want them to do either one because I hoped that we can get the well, yeah, result I'm we just, promised. I'm but just worst saying, case, it would be a refund to the city if we wanted it. Plan B: yes, if we fail in our attempt to defend it, that's correct. Because that's taxpayer money. That's our money. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I don't want to credit. I agree with you. Thank you. Alderman Cunningham, thank you. Alderman Woodcock. I think Andy was in the queue before me. We got clear could answer that question. Oh. I, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, I'll defer to, to Darrell Woodcock because he's always he's brief. Thank you. So. <laughs> Hold on. Go ahead. Alderman Woodcock. Thank you. I'll thank you. you. Next. Um, Alderman Edwards um, asked a question more or less asking, you know, how to fix this from being an issue going forward. And uh, about three or four years ago, I tried to clear up an issue about how the attorney was elected, John, if you remember. Um, uh, and I was going to have it where he was elected with the, uh, by the board with the city attorney, or the city judge. And John and I had a long discussion, and it became very clear then that when John decides to retire, that the city should move into a full-time position for the attorney, which would have completely eliminated exactly what's happening today. Um, I probably won't, I don't know, maybe I will be on the board when you retire, but if I'm not, uh, if it's after 581 days, 80 days, um, after midnight, then 
Uh, I hope this board takes that action. Uh, and also, just real quick, Alderman Cunningham mentioned that we should, or Vice Mayor Cunningham mentioned we should just create a, a retirement account to place that credit in. I can go ahead and tell you that that's not quite how that works. You can't just create retirement accounts and put massive amount of money in those, uh, even if it is to clear up a correction. Because I can tell you the IRS knows that business owners would just go, oh, there was a mistake. Here's $100,000 in my IRA. They won't let you do that. That's not what that is. 235 exchange is a duty to a new or life insurance contract. So that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Um, anyway, um, and then if I'm the last one, I won't say anything. But if not, I, I'm ready to pay $10,000 just to stop this conversation. I, I will be honest. <laughs> so if you're not the last one. Uh, um, <coughs> how many is in the queue? Alderman Bolt. <laughs> Bolt. Yeah, just real quickly, when, when I came to the first meeting for Beatty, that whole Beatty Farm thing, uh, and I was watching everybody talk, and I was thinking, oh, my God, they're finally done. And then it start back over there, and then it come right back down here. So I'm, part of, I'm now part of the problem. So I didn't go to the second one, by the way. It went on way too long. But, um, but I did want to apologize for losing my cool. I do apologize for that, and I uh, didn't mean to. I'm just very frustrated, and I'm just not used to things working like, uh, not working like this. Um, in regards to the charter, when I talked to Mark Nolan, he said he did not look at the charter. In fact, he had a very narrow scope of things to look at. So he didn't look at all these various things, at least according to him. So that's why he and I discussed the charter, and he, he wasn't overly familiar with that aspect of it, which I was shocked about because I don't know how you make a recommendation without, know, without knowing all the information. Um, To, uh, to Jonathan's, point, Jonathan's point relative to morale, I know that is an issue here. I know it's a big issue here. And even though some of you department heads are now currently in good standing, beware. Uh, if I am the mayor and I got a problem uh, and th something's going on with one of my employees, I'm going to fight like hell to defend them until somebody can prove me otherwise. So. That would be a really big concern of mine if I work for the uh, work for the city. Um, if you want to take, well, let me just real quick on. Let's say you've been working for the city since 2001, and you're getting up in years. A few of us in this room are, so a couple of you are a little older. I'm getting there, and all of a sudden you're getting ready to retire, and then all of a sudden you got this coming down the pike. And all of a sudden, everything changes for you. I mean, how stressful could that possibly be? And don't you want the city behind you? That seems pretty obvious to me. And you see all this politics up here? I mean, it's going on all the time. It's absolutely insane, right? Well, <clears throat> I'll just make another plug that put the city administrator in here, and a lot of this just goes away. I'll just tell you, it goes away. You know what? The fire hall doesn't happen. That whole debacle, that doesn't happen. The Chipmore incident, he said, she said, they did whatever. That doesn't, that doesn't happen. Missing four audit deadlines, that doesn't happen. This up here with John, this doesn't happen. And you know what happens? If it does happen, they get fired. And then they get replaced by somebody else that's competent enough to handle those, those situations. You want us to be legislators and policymakers, not administrators, because we're going to add up right here. So you don't want us doing this kind of stuff. And it, this is a mess. So I'm done. Sorry. And uh, move on. We've, we've got incredible staff here at City Hall. Um, I'm very proud of the folks that, that we have here. And in fact, three of them have been voted on the uh, mm -hmm. they are great. on the board, voted by the board to join us on our staff. Um, and I'm and I'm working every way possible to keep those folks. One of the ways I'm trying to keep those folks is I'm uh, trying to give them what they need, give them the support they need, give them the appreciation that they deserve, probably even more appreciation than they deserve, in an effort to make them understand how important that they are. Uh, I'm sick about this situation, too. I had no intention of bringing up the, uh, the greater problem here, no intention at all, until I felt like it was time to do that. It's funny, I've been criticized for bringing it up tonight, and I've been criticized for not bringing it up earlier. I felt like now was the time to bring it up. We have the opportunities, a couple people have mentioned, for greater accountability in this situation. 
I still have a hard time <clears throat> for this much money going on City Hall without knowing where it's going, without more information. Now, our city attorney said that he does have records going back to January. We can vote to waive that privilege and accept what he's got there in paper right there. That will go a long way in satisfying my responsibility and your responsibility for overseeing the money that comes out of City Hall. That would go a long way. We could vote to waive that privilege. As he said, it just takes seven votes for the pieces of paper he's got right there. We could vote to waive that, and he could provide that to us. I, th I think that would help us. We've got a motion on the floor right now. And I think that, I mean, I keep asking myself, am I satisfied with the lev level of accountability we have right now? I'm not. And I'd like to ask each of y'all, are you okay with the level of accountability we have right now in that a number of hours are submitted and I'm expected to approve those based on no more information? I'd love to see a show of hands since we already have a motion on the table. Who, is, who would like to see the level of accountability change in this situation? I know I would. To what extent? To something. And I'm happy to discuss that. Maybe that needs to go to, to someone else. I'm happy to, to open all possibilities. But the level of accountability I am not comfortable with right now of $112,000 without any explanation of what's going on. Uh, Alderman Cunningham, but I do want to come back with a little bit more. Yeah. Um, I don't, I'm not going to waive our client, attorney-client privilege for that. Now, just submitting hours... I'm fine with, but That's not right now. not to drill down on. I spoke to our director of public works for this, that, and the other thing, or Alderman One Two Three for this, that, and the other thing. No, I'm not willing to do that. But I'm I am willing for some accountability. So, so what what kind of accountability does um? I would say, so, I would say something similar to what other city attorneys give to their cities. What do they do? Um, they give um, the conversations they had and what that topic was about, with the exception of when it involves litigation or likely litigation, uh, then, they're, then they're more so vague this, in that situation. So the city of Gallatin does that? No. Uh, city of Gallatin has a full-time attorney. They, they have it worked out a different way. Well, what particular um, city does that? Um, I know that Springfield and Clarksville, uh, the, even though Clarksville has a full-time attorney, they have some uh, legal, they have some legal services that they outsource. No, the, does, well, no, 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 similar to what we have here. Oh well, that's the situation. That's similar, so even though they have somebody in the house, they still hire somebody that doesn't, that is not an employee that that is on, that submits their hours and is paid by the hour. I'd like to see an example of that okay. because that be, that's public record. So. Yeah, we can do that. But see, what's what's funny is about you asking about that is the only way that we can get that is because well, an attorney I've, has provided that to another city. I'm not prepared to vote on that tonight. Okay. Until I see a copy of gotcha. that. Uh, I got Alderman Spencer. I feel like we're going off on a completely different subject or a motion. I said we're voting on hiring the attorney, not anything to do with that. Well, that's what I was saying, that I had a hard time voting for that because of this situation right now. Vote against it. Vote against it. So, I'm sorry? Gotcha. Uh, Alderman Sprouse. Yes, make a motion that Thank we, you. we go past midnight into the next day since we are there. <laughs> So moved. We have a motion second. second to continue our meeting. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Those opposed, please say no. Uh, Alderman Sprouse. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mr. I, I'm, I'm going to address more directly the point, but uh, Mr. Skidmore asked if I, if that email was found. A email was found, but it was not an email that was sent to anyone other than Mr. Brown or Ms., Mrs. Petrelli. It was, and it does not answer the two questions that I asked. We were asked, show of hands, are we comfortable with the level of accountability that we are given? Yes. I am extremely account comfortable with the level of accountability. First, I'm going to tell you one reason. I'm going to go off subject a little bit. If I had somebody who was doing 20, 30 hours a week of work for me on an hourly basis and came to me and said, how about you just give me a flat fee? And I said, how much? And he said, 19 hours. And I say, you're still going to do the same amount of work? Yes, I would sign that deal. That's something we can address every year at the budget time. 
And if someone's concerned about we're not getting the hours we're deserved, or if the city judge or the city attorney feels like they're working more, that's something that can be negotiated by this board at budget time and future boards at budget time. But at, I also want to speak, I don't know about y'all, but I've been the subject of a records request, a couple records requests the last couple of months. I think probably some of y'all have been subject to the same records request. And what's interesting it was with my communication with another attorney who is engaged for city business, asking about my conversations on this board's liaison to the Industrial Development Board. The Industrial Development Board is an agency of the city that has its own attorney. And those records, those conversations were protected by a community, by attorney-client privilege. Mm -hmm. If I waived that, it could cost the city even more. Can you imagine? if we were having to negotiate the lawsuit with our former public works director and there was a public record of how many conversations each of us may have had with the city attorney as we were in the negotiations of that or leading up to the resignation during the time that there was appeals for uh, suspensions and, and things like that it's going to cost the city more in the long run. It's the same reason we have uh, cameras in our squad cars. We spend, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, but all it takes is one video to avoid a lawsuit to pay for them. And that's where we are. I think if Mr. Edwards wants to bring the proposal about paving to general committee and we have a certain thing because we handle personnel issues, I'll be happy to do that. But let's just go ahead and, and, and vote to defend what we're doing and then take the steps down the road to do it. Let's not expose the city by trying to control one person in the city trying to control everything. Thank you. All those in favor of approving the motion as amended, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. No. I'm not real sure what's next on the agenda. Oh. Let me help. The first, the first resolution. Yeah, that one. Okay. Next, I'm reading resolution 2019-24. This is a resolution authorizing the transfer of one $155,782 from the fire department salaries and four hundred fifty seven nine hundred thirty five dollars and twenty cents from the police department salaries to assets one between one thousand to seven thousand to purchase radio system alderman brown so moved second. a motion a second i would like to speak to that please. alderman brown uh, you got me on there you go okay there you go you're good okay um Alderman Cunningham will help me on this too since we, we met together. Uh, I would like to get uh, Chief Bush, if you would please come and uh, assist Chief Jones. Yeah, I've just seen a few still here. And, and, and well, Hobbs and too. I've just seen a few were still here. All, th all three of you, please, because uh, all three of you got knowledge that we need here. Uh, I'm going to explain this quickly and then. Uh, we kind of went through three phases in our meeting earlier, and I want to do that again very quickly, and then uh, we'll, we'll talk about the money, which was kind of the third phase. We are in a, we're in a situation as a city where our fire department and police department can't really talk, oh, if that makes any sense. Uh, our radios, the capability we have, if, if our Chief Bush is standing in that hallway and Assistant Chief Jones is in that hallway, and they're using radios, they can't communicate with each other. Oh, you're right. They have to relay to Gallatin in order to get it relayed back. So uh, that, in my opinion, could be a dangerous situation. It, it's been that way for a long time, and it's something we need to fix and have the opportunity to fix. We also have a lot of dead zones and dead spots in the city, and I'm going to have them actually explain a couple of those in a second, especially Chief uh, uh, Jones that uh, may scare you a little bit more in the situation I just told you about. So 
the, the opportunity is that we can and piggyback on what the county's doing. And by piggybacking on something, I think most everybody in here knows what that means. We can end up saving some money because the contract's already done, the work's already done. They're just inviting us to go in there with them. So um, that's kind of that's kind of that situation. So I, I want you all to address that. Whoever wants to go first uh, on on how or what or why, all three of you. Okay. So speaking from the fire side of things, uh, there's several dead zones uh, within the city limits. Um, out Saundersville Road is one in particular. Uh, deep in Station Forest territory is one. Uh, down in Station One's Peninsula uh, is also another area. Uh, where we run into issues is uh, if we have a division chief that's on the scene, we're working a structure fire. Uh, I'll take the apartments we had a couple of years ago down in Station One's territory. We had three fires down there consecutively in three nights. And uh, zero communications from uh, whoever was in charge in the front of the apartment building to whoever was doing the work inside. Uh, to us, that's, that's tragic. Um, there could be a mayday situation where somebody could get hurt, uh, fall through a floor, and uh, that may never be transmitted back to us uh, for us to take procedures or policies or to move in to try to rescue one of our own. Uh, it also turns into an issue of if we need other apparatus on the scene, if we're in those areas, to provide a better service to the, to the public as well. Um, obviously, uh, the opportunity we have been afforded um, is something that would cost the city three to five million dollars to do a loan. Uh, our part of that as the fire department is $150,000. Um, when this first come out, ours was two hundred five, dollars so we're saving about $55,000 right now to go ahead and purchase the equipment to get on board with the county. Uh, other incidents that I may bring up is we've worked out automatic aid uh, for the, uh, I guess, eastern part of the town. Uh, you start getting into uh, Cages Bend, Dames, South Dames, uh, all those large homes out there. Uh, we, we have a poor response time. So I reached out, walked, worked with the uh, Gallatin Fire Department and the number one fire district. We have no way to communicate with them. Uh, this this radio system will solve all that so we can push forward with that automatic aid system Likewise if we go out to Shackle Island like we do on, on numerous occasions or to Gallatin We have no way to communicate back to here what needs to be communicated back Typically what happens now is if we send a unit outside the city uh, Either my division chief goes with them and then I come into the city or I go with a unit That's gone out of town and the division chief stays in the city and we decide that the night of it's not like we draw straws we just make a phone call and say, hey, I'm going here, you stay here, and run the city. Uh, we just are really handicapped with the opportunity to talk. We've never had the ability to talk with police department, and now more, more so than ever, uh, that becomes more prevalent that we need to have those abilities. Uh, they've, they've done some things uh, with us in conjunction on calls that we cannot communicate with them unless we go meet them face-to-face -face or we go back through the ECC and that can be minutes to seconds, which can, again can cause uh, some delay in some medical care. And uh, I'll answer any questions that's on the fire side, and then I'll step away and uh, let the police department have their run. run. Alderman Brown. Chief Jones. It, just to really echo what Chief Bush has said. I mean, we're, I've been here since 19. I've been here since 1985, and although we have newer equipment. We're basically working with the same technology that we've had all that time. And so you talked about relaying through the ECC. I can tell you why that's a really bad idea because it's human. And I mean, if you if, if we send something to them and they relay it back to them, that message can sometimes be confusing. One of our biggest issues, and this is just an officer safety issue, is if we have officers that get out of the car in certain areas of town trying to talk on their portable radio, they can't get out. They have to go back to their main radio in their car in order to be able to call for more help, to call for an ambulance, to call the ECC. That's what they have to do because the radios just won't hit the towers. Um, and, and I mean, you can imagine what kind of an issue that is. Saundersville Road, there are sections on Saundersville. If our officers make a traffic stop, when they get out of their car and walk up to that car, they can't get back to the ECC or talk to anybody else. Sometimes they can hear them, they just can't communicate with them. 
uh, Lakeshore Apartments at the very dead end of what we call Zone 1 down off Curtis Crossroads, it's the very same situation. You get out down there, you're not going to talk back on your, on your portable radio, and especially if you go into an apartment. So once you're in a building, your coverage degrades even more. And we've tried several options over the years. Uh, Commander Horsmeyer has done propagation studies on the radio systems, and we've we've tried maneuvering things around to try to change that, and make it better, and, and it you know it's, it just doesn't work. I mean, we've gotten as far as we can get with what we have, and this is an opportunity. The original quote speaks the same way Chief Bush did was over five hundred thousand for the police department side, and the current quote is four hundred fifty-seven thousand dollars. The total. For both of us with the city, the savings is right at $190,000. So I think Commander Harshmar, too, could <coughs> probably talk to the in building coverage that, that we're guaranteed with this system countywide, which is another huge issue. So, just to add, I'll be, I'll be brief. Uh, this system that the county's putting together is a 95% in building coverage throughout the county. So, that's something we've never had before for public safety. But let me just add this about officer safety, whether it be a first responder from police or fire, it's about the safety of our citizens. Because when I jump out of my car and I go down into the ditch to uh, investigate that crash and I find somebody in there and I can't communicate back to get help, it's about our citizens' safety. So this is, to me, the most critical thing we can do for our citizens and for our, our first responders is this system. But it does give us that in-building coverage that we've never had before. So. I can get into the technical stuff, and I'm not going to do that tonight, obviously. And I know you appreciate that. But yes, this, is, this is something we've never been able to have. Me now. That's yeah, yeah. Alderman Brown. Okay. Um, thank, thank you, all three of you. Um, I think anybody on TV or in the audience understands <coughs> how important that is. Just by the last couple scenarios, uh, I didn't realize that we had dead spots that were that bad. <laughs> Uh, that's a pretty dangerous situation. So anyway, that's that's the reason that resolution is before you. I'd like to give the rest of this to Alderman Cunningham uh, so she can talk about the money part of it because we chaired that meeting together. And uh, that's all I have. Thanks. Alderman Cunningham. Thank you, Alderman Brown. Thank you, Mayor. Um, well, the money basically is coming from two line items, one from the fire department's um, <clears throat> salary line items uh, $155,782.61 and the other one, uh, one is coming from the police department line item salaries of $457,935.20 now you ask how come they have so much money in those line items that was a question that was asked at the public safety and the uh, finance committee meeting uh, both of those line items, um, well, let's, uh, I'm going to refer to the police first because that was the almost, um, it was over 400,000. Um, we had budgeted uh, a certain amount of police officers for the, uh, during the budget year of 2018-19, uh, uh, which is, we're currently in, um, for full year, you know, for I can't remember how many extra police officers we budgeted for. Ten. Was it 10? Thank you. Thank you. Seven and three. Uh, to start, you know, at the beginning of the year, which would have been July 1st, however, um, through uh, a process of training and background checks, drug testing, et cetera, et cetera, the hiring was delayed because of, of the rigorous testing and um, training and the um, background checks how, how long they take so um, some of the hiring wasn't done until mid-year so we had six months worth of credits for those additional 10 plus we had retirements and and people leaving the force and then replacing them and there was a gap there so uh, that is why we have that extra overage in those in that area and also the similar for the for the fire department as well um, but uh, the urgency of this was because of the amount of uh, savings that we'll realize if we do it now because essentially it's going to be revenue neutral uh, for the budget 
for this, you know, for the present current year's budget. Um, the savings uh, for the um, current price on the uh, savings is going to be one hundred ninety thousand and eleven dollars uh, because of the uh, discount that we're getting because of the county, right? Correct me if I'm wrong here. Yes, that's correct. Because we're piggybacking onto the county, so we're a small portion, a smaller portion of the countywide program, and um, the discount may go away. Very, very possible. So that's why the sense of urgency for this, and that's that's the math on the financial side. So thank you, Mayor. Alderman Cunningham, thank you, Alderman Brown. Alderman Skidmore. Uh, thank you. I tell you what, I, I trust your judgment. <laughs> I trust uh, Alderman, our boss mayor, uh, Cunningham's judgment on this. I had a couple of questions, but I think I'm just going to let them go. Um, the, uh, that's a lot of money when I look at that because I'm for this program. Um, I think it's, it, I mean, gosh, it's so important. And you, I know I'm not telling, preaching, I'm preaching to the choir. I've known you. I was sitting here looking at all three of you, and gosh, when you said 1985, I was like, oh, my God, I, I was in Ward 3 uh, knocking on your door over on, over there. I'm not going to tell where, but over there on the, on, the, on that side of town. And, knocking on your door. Yeah, at campaigning. And so, and I, Scotty and, then of course, Paul, my gosh. Um, uh, does your wife still do the longer burger uh, baskets? Not anymore. Not anymore? Yeah. Okay. But you know what I'm talking about. That's a long time. So, and Scotty, I remember when he was a skinny young man. So, well, you're losing weight and you're looking good. So, I'm just going to leave it at that, Mayor. And I trust y'all's judgment. And uh, maybe during our budget hearings, I might just come by and privately and ask you about this. How about that? Thank you, Mayor. Alderman Skidmore, thank you. Alderman Woodcox. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Um, before I forget, th thanks uh, Alderman Pat Campbell for showing up. It shows his dedication. Thank you. Um, obviously, I was uh, attending that yeah, Waffle House in 30 minutes. I attended the uh, joint uh, committee meeting, obviously, uh, as a member of the Finance Committee. Uh, I asked my um, questions that I'm sure everyone knew I would ask. Why not use this money for paving? Why not use this money for the fire hall? Uh, I think we just heard the uh, logical and um, logical reasons, and we obviously have a legit safety concern, especially in Ward 5 on the police and fire side, so it was a no-brainer for me. Um, we're, we have to do this no matter what, and by doing it now, we save $200,000. That can go towards more paving is how I'm seeing it. Mm -hmm. That's why I supported the motion at committee, and I support it tonight, and I ask you to vote for it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Woodcock. All those in favor of Resolution 2019-24, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. That passes unanimously. I believe what we have next is Resolution 2019-21. This is a resolution regarding the calling of Special Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting. Alderman Petrelli. So moved. Second. A motion is second. Alderman Petrelli, do you wish to speak? Um, I believe um, I discussed this at the last BOMA meeting, the, the need for just clarifying the process, and I appreciate the board's uh, support on this. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Sprouse. I'd like to offer an amendment, please. A couple of these came out of committee. One came the request of the sponsor. Um, if you'll see that it has that the, the city recorder shall poll the board members at least 48 hours prior to special board meeting, you need to put in the responses will be in writing. Also add that um, failure to respond or absence of response will be assumed to be a no. And then on the follow further resolve, no quorum is established, city recorder will notify city staff and aldermen, just say board members. So we have a motion of amendment. I need a second. Second. I'll second. Motion is second. Alderman Woodcock, do you want to speak on the amendment? Alderman Woodcock, go ahead. So with the poll, let's say we have a meeting uh, that we're trying to schedule for Thursday at 630. Does this mean that the city recorder would have to um, receive the responses by 630 on Tuesday? Can we say two business days prior instead of 48 hours? Hold on. Exactly. Thank you. Alderman Sprouse. 
I will take that, and uh, if you don't mind, I will uh, change my amendment to say to also include at least two business days prior to a special board meeting. And uh, so here, um, you are withdrawing and changing your amendment. I'm withdrawing the amendment, and I'm placing it back with that addition. That way, if a meeting was being called for Monday, the city recorder would not be calling us on Saturday. We need a second of that for that. We have a motion and a second. Still on the amendment. <coughs> All those in favor of this amendment, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, please say no. That passed unanimously. Alderman Woodcock. Any motion? Um, right, yeah. Yes, um, motion. I, I'm going to support this. I think it's, it's great. Uh, I voted against adding it to the agenda just because I was confused <coughs> on what is going to happen in the next two weeks that we are forcing this to be on tonight. Just can someone clarify? what we're worried about over the next two weeks anyone yes. Alderman Petrelli oh uh, to me there was there was no rush other than I just wanted no further confusion about this particular um, subject matter and since I spoke to it at length at the last uh, Bowen meeting and we were only absent one member I figured that most aldermen were up to speed with what my intent of the legislation is Alderman Woodcock thank you Alderman Spruss. Just a couple of hours ago, we called a special called meeting. So this, if we pass this, the city recorder would have then be charged to make sure that people are going to be able to attend, that there will be quorum before anyone makes plans to attend that meeting. I didn't know it would be that quick, but same night. Alderman Woodcock. Uh, co well, I have a pro hard time with that, too. I emailed Gary Jekyll about this, and he gave me a comment that said it would be better to send the notice out and then have each alderman uh, contact the, the city recorder. Um, and he said the mayor can still keep the special meeting on the schedule, and if aldermen say they cannot attend, then obviously we wouldn't have a quorum. And that was coming from Gary Jekyll. He felt like it's better to go ahead and send out the notice to get the notice out there in time. Um, and then each alderman would contact the recorder. Um, also, I'd, I'd love it if, if the sponsor would add some, something. This is part of the reason I want to hold off, because we've had a hard time with committee meetings lately, uh, with those being changed, um, not so much of them being canceled, but those being changed uh, with time. And sometimes we don't have all three committee members who can be there because of the change. And I would love to see something that, that involves committees and when those meetings are changed or when the special committee meetings are called. And really, it should be that all three members can be there. Is I hate seeing special call committee meetings uh, called and all three members can't be there. Um, so I'd love it if the, if the sponsor here could consider some, some changes there. Oh, I'll address that. Alderman Petrelli. Sure. Um, no, I'm, I'm not going to amend the language of this legislation to include special call meetings. Uh, I'm sorry, special call committee meetings. Um, because I, I want there to be zero confusion about special called meetings by the mayor. Now, in regard to special called committee meetings, I mean, sh should we have a discussion about why we're having so many? Because I'm willing to have that discussion. I think that we're having so many special called of me, I'm sure. committee meetings because of the lack of information that we get because of the confusion. I mean, if, if you want to make special legislation up for special called committee meetings, I would be willing to, uh, I think everybody up here would be willing to look at it, but I mean, you have to look at why are we having to meet so often, just about every week at this point, for almost every committee. Thank you. Alderman Sprouse. Thank you. We have had an inordinate amount of committee meetings special called committee meetings but here's the good thing I have not known of any conflict about members being left out of meetings and scheduled without them being involved I chair general committee every time we've even it's something as simple as having to start a half hour early um, I, I guess I've been doing it for about th three years four years now I call the committee members and say tell me days you're available tell me days I need to avoid I served on a committee before that Mrs. Cunningham chaired. She did the exact same thing. 
and it was one of those that said, hey, I can't make it. Oh, don't worry about it. It's just really a housekeeping issue, and we take care of it. I serve on capital projects with Mr. Campbell. Mr. Campbell, Mr. Mr. Campbell is here more than anywhere else than because of, of capital projects and the number of meetings that we've had to have. And he has to schedule, he has to schedule five people for a meeting. And again, we've never had any conflict. Um, I think that the that the burden is upon the chairman of those committees to um, be responsive and responsible to their committee members. And if they are not in scheduling the meetings, then they can very easily be replaced as the committee chairman. So I think that's where the accountability is. Thank you. All those in favor of resolution 2019-21, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, please say no. No. And that passes. I need a motion to adjourn, I believe. Motion. We have a motion to adjourn and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. As opposed, play no. That passes.